If you'll excuse me, I've got some avocados to mash. Oh, I'd like to hit her with a stick and see what comes out. And what about that engagement ring you bought? Mum, please. It's pound to a penny. She sold it. Oh, for now. God's sake, Mum. I mean, who are you to give relationship advice? The succession of freaks and nutters you've had in your bed over the years. A bit harsh. Yeah, I'll go. No, 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 I'll go and see Thanks for coming over. Is Kylie still there? No, no, she and Davy went into town. I've been worried about you all evening. Did you cope without me? Actually, yes. Leanne stepped in. Leanne? Yeah, Nick was very grateful. Well, of all the stupid... No. I'm going to stop right mm -hmm. there. He's made it perfectly clear that nothing I say makes any difference, so... It's his funeral. You know, I can see why you're so worried. He's completely mesmerised by her. Well, it's as if she's got some hold over him. Five hundred years ago, she'd have been drowned as a witch. Well, affairs of the heart are never straightforward, are they? I mean, if you're around someone all the time, seeing them at their best and their worst, you can't help but be drawn. You really are a remarkable woman, Gail. I shouldn't have done that. I'm so sorry. Look, um, I'll go. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't come for Oh, it's you! I thought I'd left the CD playing. Giving it all tonight. Really? Uh, no. Look, the Nolans aren't exactly on our playlist. It's not the ambiance I'm after. Me and your father used to dance to that tune. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry about yesterday. You know, I was over the top. You didn't deserve it. No, I didn't. But after what you've been through lately, I think I can forgive you for being a little bit too. Thanks, Mum. Hey, look, you carry on singing. It's good to know someone in our family's got something to sing about. Maybe. Oh, I know that face. Normally means there's a man lurking somewhere, and I mean lurking. He's not like the others. What, he hasn't just jumped over the wall at Rampton? He's perfectly normal, thank you very much. Anyway, I'm not seeing him. We're just very good friends, that's all. <laughs> I've heard that before. So, do I know Mr. Wonderful? No, I don't think you do. I don't think anybody knows him. Only me. The light dancing. You hung up your tabard for the day? Yes, thankfully, it doesn't really do much for me. Well, you don't stand where I do every morning. Oh, get away with you. Glad to see you smiling again. Well, that's down to you. You were wonderful last night. I felt like less than nothing and you picked me up off the floor and made me feel good about myself. I don't know how you feel anything but. You're attractive. Oh, no, 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 I mean it. You're sensitive, you're compassionate, you're funny. What's wrong with all that? Well, maybe if you knew me a bit better. I'd like that. I'd like that very much. Lewis Archer, as I live and breathe. Patrick? Yeah, it's me. I do have a portrait in the attic like you. Wonderful to see you again. How are you? Well, I can't complain. <laughs> Not that it stops me. <laughs> so where's your legendary manners, then? Are you going to introduce me? Of course, I'm sorry. Gail McIntyre, Patrick Woodson. We go back, I don't know, how far? Well, since before you were born, I reckon. Oh, peas in a pod, I can tell. <laughs> well, hardly. Uh, as far as peas go, I think I'm mushy. He's more petit point. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me buy you a drink, mate. We've got a serious catch-up to do. Sorry, I can't. I'm, I'm on duty. No, it's OK. I can come up for Really? Oh, you're an angel, Gail. Thank you. OK. What's it going to be? There you go. Never mind, find it funny. Oh, he knows his stuff all right. <laughs> and that's exactly what the punters will expect. You know, they pay top dollar, they want the best, a bit of class. I want you to manage it. Be the face of it. And the voice, for that matter. You'll be well rewarded. But I've got no experience managing. No, no, don't, don't worry about that, because I'll be on hand to do any, any of the heavy work, you know, the admin and so on. I'll provide the spit, you bring the polish. That's well, very tempting. Well, wait till you see the accommodation. 
I mean, we're not talking two birth caravan and a car park here. We're talking about a luxury apartment with a balcony overlooking the Lucker Hills. Blow you away. It sounds wonderful. I don't know what to say. Best offer you've ever had. Well, don't worry about biting my hand off. I've got another one. So, shall we shake on it? Patrick, your offer is amazing and I'm deeply flattered, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to decline it. What, you're turning me down to stop here? Well, I've been very happy here. Now, don't be hasty, mate. I mean, you don't get this kind of opportunity every week. You'd be perfect. Perhaps, but I'm afraid my answer's no. So she's sat in the chair, yeah, umming and ahhing about this bloke that she fancies. Really? Yeah, only she says she doesn't want to seem too keen, right? Like she's making too much of an effort. Sounds quite canny. Hmm. Well, I just want to know what she wants doing to her hair. So I say to her, what do you want me to do with your hair? And she says, well, I don't want it to look like I've been to the hairdressers. So I spin around, whip the gown off her and say, that'll be 15 quid, please. Yeah, she didn't find it funny either. You listening? Oh... Sorry, love, it's just something happened at the bistro earlier. It's been worrying me. Well, go on, then. I've still got half my brew left. If you were offered a dream job in a glamorous location, would you take it? The executioner retired in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> David. <laughs> it's about Lewis. Well, go on, then. What's he been up to? Nothing. An old friend came into the bistro earlier Offered him the chance to run a luxury hotel in Italy. Good pay, fantastic apartment, everything he's always wanted. Nice one. When's he going? Sooner the better, if you ask me. That's the point. He's not. He turned it down. Why would he do that? I don't know. It'll be somewhat dodgy, though. They're probably robbed off some old biddy in Italy or something. Well, on the run from the Mafia, it won't surprise me. I don't think it's anything like that. I'm surprised you said no, but uh, I'm relieved, I must say. Well, one has to follow one's instincts. I appreciate your loyalty. Perhaps we should look at your salary. Oh, no, it's very kind, but not necessary, Nick. I don't want to take advantage of you. <laughs> it's no more than you deserve. You're an asset to this place. I'm going to look after you, whether you like it or not. Well, if I need to know what a gift horse's mouth looks like, you're the man to come to. Well, it is possible to be content with one's lot. Even when you're offered your wildest dreams on a plate. Anybody else, I'd have said they were scared. But not you, Lewis. Nothing phases you. Oh, you'd be surprised. Why? Why turn down everything you've always wanted? I don't know. Just seemed the right thing to do at the time. Still does. But I can't necessarily rationalise it. I think you can. Until you looked at me, I'd have laid odds on you saying yes. What changed your mind? I can't talk about it here. I'm due a break. Is anyone back at your place? No. No, we can go there. Good. Well, well made, a cup of tea. <laughs> Wouldn't have got that in Italy. Well, I don't see that as a deal breaker somehow. <laughs> no. Perhaps not. So what is it you couldn't tell me over the road? Well, I turned Patrick down because... Well, because I couldn't leave. Not the way things stood. How do you mean? Well, for a start, I still owe Audrey a great deal of money. Well, the job in Italy would pay more. You could always pop her a cheque in the post. You sound like you want to get rid of me. I'm far from it. I'm just trying to understand your decision. Why would you stay when all logic says you should go? Logic went out the window a long time ago. What I feel... Well, it doesn't make sense. Maybe you should let me be the judge of that. All right. In recent weeks, I've developed feelings for you. Strong, all-consuming feelings. I, I, I'm sorry if that shocks you. I, I'm a fool. I know there's no possibility you could care for me. I'm just... I'm deluding myself. Maybe I should just go to Italy after all. 
Look, I'll, I'll, I'll go. No. I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go anywhere. Well, you were right. I knew this happened very quickly. No, it's not that. I have no doubt this is what I want. You are who I want. Well, that's wonderful. No. No, it's not. I can't do this. We can't do this. It's, it's too messy. It's too complicated. Because of Audrey? To break her heart. She was so happy with you, and in her eyes, I wrecked all that. Yes. Yes, we were very happy. In another life, we would have been wonderful together. Not this one. Oh. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. No tears, Oko, huh? I completely understand what you're saying. And your desire to protect Audrey does you credit. She deserves better. I'd better leave. You've just missed him. Not as much as this place will miss him, mind. What? You know, have you ever had one of those days when you wish you hadn't gone out of bed? Uh, will you stop talking in riddles and tell me where he is? He's handed in his notice. He's taking that job in Italy. Where is he now? Want to finalise things with a friend. Did they say where they were meeting? Uh, some hotel in town. Didn't mention the name. He'll be back later. I see. Is it urgent? Uh, no, it's just something to do with your gram. Oh, think those two will patch it up. I doubt that very much. Pity. It's going to be hard to replace. Yeah. Men like him don't grow on trees. Not around here, anyway. Jenna knows what she's doing. Are you? Oh, well, if your dad's paying, make sure you have a pudding. All right, love, I'll see you later. Bye. Hi, Gail. Hey, do you fancy a quickie in the Rovers? I feel like celebrating. Oh, what's the occasion? Sophie's physio reckons she's doing really well. Oh, that is good news. It's the best, so the drinks are definitely on me. Uh, sorry, Sal, I, I really don't fancy it, to be honest. Is everything all right? You really don't want to know. We're mates, aren't we? But why don't you come back to mine for a brew? Because Kevin's taking Sophie out for tea. We won't be disturbed. Got some chocolate digestive. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just the ticket. <laughs> Come on. Listen, maybe we can offer closer for a while. Today he kissed me. But he wanted to take it further. Well, do you think he's serious? Why wouldn't he be? Well, it's just, you know what fellas are like. The promise of the earth. Well, he's not some fella. He's a total gentleman. And he couldn't be more serious. After what he's done, I'm in no doubt about that. Well, what do you mean? Well, he was offered a dream job, but he would have had to leave Weatherfield to take it up. He passed up on the opportunity of a lifetime to stay with me. Oh, Gail, it sounds so romantic. I mean, it's just like Edward and Mrs Simpson. Oh, no. That was straightforward next to my situation. But I don't see the problem. Well, let's just say he comes with baggage. In fact, he could fill a carousel twice over. I see. It's not like some of your recent... Honey. Oh, no. No. He was involved with someone I know. It's not Kevin, is it? Kevin! <laughs> Not. Well, why? What's wrong with Kevin? Um, uh, nothing. Kevin's very Kevin. 
You don't know all the people involved. Well, I know this much, girl. If this other woman is any kind of friend, she'll be happy for you. Decent, you know. Oh, no. No. He was involved with someone I know. I care about her. That's very good of you, Gail, but there comes a time when you have to look out for yourself. You have to put your happiness first. Who knows when a chance like this is going to come along again, if ever. Let you approach the menu. Thank you. Hello again. Hi there. Look, before you say anything, your mother's in with some lower order of primate in tow. I think he's the one from New Year's Eve. So the neighbor to the second date. It's Henry Wilkins. They go back years. He used to be on the council with I him. assume his constituency was Weatherfield Zoo. Let's hope he doesn't eat the centerpiece. Never mind him. We need to talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a bit busy at the moment. All right. You can wait. Yeah. I'll have a white wine. Any, any particular, particular variety? Why don't you surprise me? Nothing would give me greater pleasure, Gail. Did you not get him right the first time? <laughs> oh, look at his face. I'm only kidding, son. I shall be back, hopefully, with a former Lady Mayoress on my arm. Well, we'll see, Henry. Oh, has Noel Coward got my doggy bag? Your leftovers. Waste not one lot. My basset will make short work of this lot. Night, all. Night, Audrey. Yeah, um, night. I seem to get on all right. Yeah, I'm glad he's been able to move on. I just wish I had the same opportunity. Dear, didn't think you were your type. You can say that again. <laughs> Why don't you two knock off early? Hey, I can help Lewis clear up. You look done in. <laughs> it's all right. No, it's not. You've not been yourself all day. And don't you need to spend some quality time with that husband of yours? Well, it suits me, but... Oh, well, if you're sure. Perfectly, you get off. Thanks. Cheers. That wasn't very subtle. Oh, well, they don't suspect anything. Mm. Anyway, the time for subtlety's past. Yeah. Have you taken that job? I'm due to fly out at the end of the month. Given what you said earlier, it's probably for the best. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Then there were two. Not for much longer. Not if you go to Italy. Well, there's nothing worth staying for here. Yes, there is. You changed your mind? Yes. If you've not changed yours. I appreciate that. I wouldn't That's give out this job lightly. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Of course, I understand that. And if you feel you need to take it, I completely understand. No, no, you don't. I haven't the slightest doubt about where my heart lies. And for that reason, I desperately want to stay here. But if you have any lingering reservations... No, no. None whatsoever. I've thought of nothing else since this morning. I mean, I know it's not going to be easy, but... some things are worth fighting for. I can't tell you how happy I am to hear you say that. I'll ring Patrick in the morning and tell him I've changed my mind. Will he be angry with you for messing him about? Furious, I suppose. But I'd rather upset an old mate than lose the love of my life. Is that how you really feel? Audrey meant a great deal to me, but... next to the depth of feelings that you inspire, I don't know how I'm going to tell her. I suggest we don't. Keep it secret? Well, to begin with, you know, try and establish ourselves first. Smell the roses before we have to face the music with your family. You're right. We don't want to kill this before it begins. Besides, a little cloak and dagger might add a little extra frisson. Oh, believe me. I don't need any help in that direction. <laughs> it's not yes, either. 
You must still be in love with her, or you won't be agonising over it like this. Oh, it's complicated. I know, but she regrets what she did and she feels the same way. What? You're on her side all of a sudden. I'm just trying to work out what's best for you. You're obviously still in love with her, and you say you're missing Simon. Isn't that another reason? Maybe. I think you need to forget about what happened. Speak to her about why she wants to try again. Excuse me. Is this Leanne you're speaking about? Not now, Mum. Are you saying she's been in touch with him? After all she's done to you? Gail, come and give me a hand behind the bar for a second, would you? <coughs> that man's a godsend. <laughs> but if he's thinking of getting back with Leanne... Yeah, I know it sounds horrendous. The person you should be talking to is her. Sounds like she's doing all the running. Say what? We'll say she's caused enough trouble already and she should back off. Oh, she'd love that. Look, it's not going to be easy, I know. Have you forgotten the state Nick was in on Christmas Day? Of course I haven't. I was worried sick about him. Exactly. We don't want a repeat performance if things go wrong again. Look, I know you're not doing this to cause trouble. You're doing it because you care. It's true. You're a responsible mum. It's one of the things I love about you. If I speak out, won't that just make her more determined? Or Nick see more sense. Look, I know this. He won't thank you if you say nothing and it goes wrong again. Having said that, maybe this is none of my business. I'm sure you'll do the best thing. So we'll get it. It's gonna be all right. A word with you, please. Oh, yeah. I hear you've been in touch with Nick. What's that to you? Well, quite a lot, actually, considering the problems you've caused him recently. Oh, and he's talked to you about this, has he? No. But I sense there's something in the wind between the pair of you, and I don't think any good can come of it. Well, with respect, Gail, it's none of your business. It's my business when it all goes wrong. So, if you care for him at all, Will you stop playing with his feelings and leave him to get on with his You're life? You're unbelievable. I've said what I came to say. I'll leave you with it. <laughs> I never thought I'd find myself a dream again. Nothing. Have you been in a fight? You have, haven't you? Who with? Oh, it doesn't matter. Who's you been fighting? Well, you must have seen. It's Peter, OK? We have a go at me. Didn't help your little talk with Leanne. Well, I only did what was best. I told you this morning that girl's nothing but trouble. Mum, Mum, will you just leave it? Look, I know you don't want to hear. Yeah, but well, you got that right. But somebody's got to tell. No, no, someone doesn't have to tell me. You know, you're so out of order. You just make things a thousand times worse. You just listen. No, I don't me. want to listen to you. Will you get out? Actually, everyone, will you just get out? There's nothing to pay. Everything's on the house. It's just not a good time, OK? Thank you. Do you not hear me? I can't leave you on your own. Please, leave me in peace, for God's sake. Come on, girl. Let's do what he says. I can get your sandwich like a little sparrow. Stress always puts me off my food. No wonder you kept your lovely figure all these years, worrying about those boys of yours. Hmm? Can't help it. I've always been the same. I'm like a lioness. Well, it's very laudable, but you have a life too, you know. They're both adults. You shouldn't be at their beck and call all the time. <laughs> David wants me to meet him in the Rovers. No. I think that rather proves my point. Yes, but he'll be worried about his brother. Just leave it for a while. Hmm? I don't know. Anna, could I trouble you for a cup of hot chocolate? For Gail. Shall I stick you some squirty cream on top? <laughs> Why not? I'm worth it. That's the spirit. Cruel to be kind. Time to cut those apron strings, huh? Nick? Good? Mm. Good. Just like you. So lucky to have you in my life, Lewis. You're the sunshine shining through my ray. You can be so poetic. I do so adore a woman with hidden depths. Oh, I used to love poetry. Memorised every word Pam Ayres ever wrote. 
his master's voice again. Don't you go and put him out of his misery. Could it be right if I drop by later? I'd love you to. If I can get rid of David and Kylie. Oh, tricky. On the contrary. I'll sing along to my ABBA compilation tape. Won't see them for dust. Ingenious. Not just a pretty thing. <laughs> Nip out for a bit. No, nice of you to join us. Where have you been? I was indulging in a little bit of me time. Well, while you've been doing whatever you've been doing, Leanne's across the road bending Nick's ear. And David said Nick is in the most terrible state. I mean, it's not like him at all. Right, if he won't tell her to stay away, I'll just have to go and do it myself. Uh, Mum, I, I won't go winding him up if I were you. He practically told you where to go last time. I don't care. He's not in his right mind when it comes to that woman. No, you stay put, Wade. I'll do no such Look, thing. Look, you'll stay put, or I swear to God, I'll knock you over and sit on you. Oh, I'd like to see you try. Hey, up. Nice to win quiz at three o'clock. Relationships again. Have you learned absolutely nothing? Hmm? David, I think you better go over. Go on, just check that Nick's all right. David, the voice of reason. Oh. Now we are in trouble. Uh, thanks for your vote of confidence, Mum. Thank you very much. Look like they could kick off at any minute. Go for it, Rinkley. Show us what you got. Are you filming this? It goes down a storm on the tents, innit? Pensioner scrapping. I am not a pensioner. Gosh, the blood pressure, babes. They're celebrating something special with us. How are they going to feel when they find out it's one big, fat, ugly lie, eh? I do hope David's talked some sense into Nick. I want pins here. Nobody tells me anything. Don't fret, Gail. You give yourself worry line. Oh, too late. Got worry, can you? <laughs> Let me kiss them away. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Hello, Audrey. <laughs> not out with your gentleman friend this evening, then? Um, no, no, not, not that it's any of your business. Anyway, I've uh, given up men more trouble than they're worth, all of them. <laughs> As I was saying, if you could give this note to Nick, I don't want to disturb him while he's, you know, indisposed. Hey, yes, sir. I'll make yeah. sure he gets it. Thank you very much. Well, I'll say good night. 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 Girl. About before. No, well, it's not every day your mother threatens to knock you over and sit on you. Yes, but I was worried about Nick. I didn't want you wading in and making things worse. I know. Shall I put the kettle No, in? no. Not come round here to sit here drinking tea with you. It breaks my heart to see Nick in such a state. He needs a scale. So, this is it. Now, we've got to stop sniping at each other and concentrate on him. I couldn't agree more. Right. I'm off. Say I love Nick. In bare feet? Mm -hmm. well, it wouldn't be worth much doing it in Doc Martens, would it? You know, I think Nick should think about redecorating. Change stuff around, a new start. They could paint some glitter balls, be like nothing went wrong. I didn't mean that. But we don't need you, bro. We're just going to get things back to normal. Normal? Yeah, how it was. Just so you can trade again. I'll do it. No, it's all right. Gran's giving me the morning off. I'll do it. On my own. You look exhausted. At least let us help. Please. It's what I want. Proper Good loud and drunk, throwing stuff all over the place. Effin and Jeffin. I fear for Nick, my son who owns this place, stepping in to throw him out. Right. I'm done. OK, just drop in the invoice. Will do. Sorry. Is he here? Wouldn't have thought that was any of your business. Look, I just need five minutes. Oh, you and your five minutes, eh? Is that how long you spent with Peter on your wedding day? I'm moving to Leeds, OK? I... Hallelujah! I'll pass on the news. I just want to explain. So you can wring every last drop out of him. Sick him, I'll give you a shout if I need you. Just in case I don't get the chance to tell you, I think you're a hard, selfish, Mom, cold... Mum! Nick deserves better. She's angry. You should open up tonight. Show her you're moving on. Rub her nose in it. 
Mum. She's hurting, Mum. Ha! She's a Battersby. Always has been, always will be. Actually, she will be hurting. She's just lost a meal ticket. Is that what you were thinking while I was with her? You'll meet someone else. Someone who's not dragging an airport trolley full of baggage with another bloke's kid popped on top. Actually, it's a pity she's only moving to Leeds. What you need is never to clap eyes on her again. Round the side he knows he's got to move on. You're off duty then. You really should learn to have more you time, Gail. Well, we could go home. I think David and Kylie are out. Well, you, you, you're a very attractive woman. And you're a very attractive Let me just say, um, due to my, shall we say, um, past encounters, the only way I can hope to create a loving and lasting relationship is to take things very slowly on the physical side. You know, dig foundations. I hope you understand. Well, most men aren't interested in a woman's foundations, Lewis. <laughs> you are a truly unique man. There's no rush. We can take our time. Indeed. Well, at least asleep is not bothering anyone. Way! Oh. <laughs> Celebrating a good day's heartbreaking. Nick, you ready for a top up then? Might as well get some more glasses. Well, this looks ominous. I hope you haven't thrown your best man speech away. We're getting married. Congratulations. Does this mean I'm going to be best man again? <laughs> Look, we're not going to do speeches. Uh, we're just going to get married and get on with our lives. Ridiculous. Well, I, I want to be best man. David. I do. After what she's done to you. Well, I think it's lovely. Yeah, well, we know whose pipe you're playing. <laughs> It's Nick I'm worried about. Yes. But that's something you turn on and off like a cold tap. So when is this so-called wedding? Tomorrow. Oh, for goodness sake. Are you determined to make a fool of yourself? It's too soon, too stupid and a complete farce. I'd like you to come. And I meant what I said. You deserve better. And better wouldn't be hard to find. No, I will not have you talking about Leanne like that. Nick, it's all right. No, 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 it's not all right. It's not all right. I've told you, Leanne and I are getting married. And I've told you she's not worth it. Whether you come, give us your blessing. Take back what you said. I'm sorry, Mum. There's no place for you in our lives. Well, listen, I hope you have better luck today, buddy. Thank you. Look, if you're sure you can't make it, there's a shindig in the bistro afterwards. There's a glass of fizz with yeah. your name on it. Oh, you are. I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. See you later. So, it's true then, is it, eh? It's on, it's off, it's up, it's down. <laughs> you know, I wish you two would make up your mind. Getting married is a perfectly straightforward procedure, unless Leanne Battersby's involved. I mean, she's probably waiting now before she decides to see which way the wind is blowing and then she'll tie the knot. In other words, I wouldn't hold your breath. Doris, would you like to come to the wedding? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> Asha! I... Who's doing her hair? Maria. It's madness. It's lunacy. Well, Leanne ain't my favourite person either, but what do they say? Love's blind. Have to be deaf and all mouth on her. All his life is hung around waiting for her to make up her mind. He's like the wooden spoon and the whole world knows it. Well, it's the taking part that counts. I brought you up to our backbone, to stand up for yourself, to say enough's enough. I want some respect. Who's this talking now, was are you? All of us. Mum, it's all right for you. You've not got to come up with a best man speech in how many hours? Use the last one. It's in the bin. It's like a nodding dog. Can you remember any of the jokes? Well, yeah, I can't, but it's all Christmas-related, like him unwrapping Leanne's stocking, that sort of stuff. Ugh. Is this milk off? I don't think so. It tastes weird. We're using a different coffee. Anyway, it might never happen. Got six and a half hours to change her mind. In Leanne years, that's a lifetime. Well, he said he'd never speak to you again. Idle threats. 
They're gonna go through with it, Mum, whether you boycott the wedding or not. So what exactly would you be achieving? I could leave her on the doorstep. In the rain. Oh, and that's really mature, isn't it? Go upstairs, put a frock on, fake smile for the pictures. I mean, you hated Kylie in the beginning, and look how that changed round. Besides, I haven't got an hat. Leanne ain't got a dress. Well, with her track record, why bother? Are we getting changed into something more appropriate? I'm undecided. Oh, got a heavy schedule this afternoon, have you? I might attack a large pile of iron. Gail, today isn't about you. You were there on Christmas Day. I mean, has the world gone mad? He's putting his head in the noose again. Why should I stand around and watch? And how do you think Nick's going to take this? <sighs> Might make him think twice. Look, we support our children unconditionally. Huh. Yet most of the time. I mean, David's made more mistakes than you can shake a stick at. Sarah went and got herself pregnant and you stood by them. It's different. And then there's Carly. I mean, oh, imagine having her as one of the family. But she is... And we do our best to love her despite everything. So just go and get changed, show willing. Otherwise, you know, Nick may turn his back on you. And then where will you be? You know, I should have got some of those flowers that go in your buttonholes. See why you should go to any bother. Oh, Mum, will you give it a rest? Well, first it's Las Vegas and none of us are invited. Then we give up our Christmas day. I've not changed my position on this, David. No, really? Just because I'm going doesn't mean I approve. Right, well, why are you going, then? Because I'm compliant. That's why. Because I'm a sap, a pushover. I'll see you over there. See ya. It's, it's typical. If it means a little less aggro, I'm happy to go through with it. You make a decision, and yet again, your family talk you out of it. Why do you always have to compromise? I wish you had the courage to sow some backbone. Mum? Nick? You changed your mind? No. I'm sorry. I don't think I have. This is folly. I stand by what I said. And if you're determined to go through with it, then you can count me out. You got dressed and everything. like ripping off a band-aid. Oh, speaking of which, my feet are killing me. I can't wait to get these plasters off. <laughs> the glamour and seduction didn't last very long. Oh, don't worry, it will. <laughs> well, these days, the same as what boys want. Buy the same as you bought Addy. Do you remember that doll of Sarah's you used to love? No. Yes, you do. What was her name? <laughs> Baby Jane. Used to take her everywhere. <laughs> All right. I was about three. Drink your juice. Yeah, so you say. <laughs> 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 what do you think, babe? Fancy meeting me in town? Get something to eat and then help me choose this birthday present? Can't. I've got to go dentist. Oh, you never said. I did. You just don't listen. Toast is burning. Have cereal, or you'll be late. Oh, and for what must be the sixth time of asking, will you empty this bin? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. It's funny though, isn't it? To a guest user, I am going to flame him well, kill him. Well, I suppose I felt a bit sorry for him. I'll tell you what, if any man ever spoke to me like that, you're all right. Fine. It's a bit tired, doesn't it? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Graham, what's up? Do you know, to be honest, I don't know where to start. Well, firstly, I need a gin and tonic, a very large one, please. You will not believe the day I've had today. It seems... Wait for this. Kylie is pregnant. 
pregnant. Since when? Oh, who knows? Well, I hope they know what they're doing. It's not five minutes since they were at each other's throats. David, I expect, will be over the moon. Yeah, well, just you hang on before you go buying bibs and booties. Why, well, there's nothing wrong, is there? Yes, plenty. Apparently, Kylie has booked herself in for an abortion without telling David she's pregnant. That's ridiculous. Yes, well, I wish it was. Well, I don't get it. Why would you do that? David knows? Yes. He's just dashed up there now trying to stop her. I mean, Lord knows if he'll be in time. Well, he'll be devastated. And Kylie would know that, so if you ask me, no, she's okay. done it. Look, we should keep out of it. I don't agree. We're family. It's going to need our support yeah. to get over this. Actually, she's right. I mean, goodness knows what possess possessed the girl. Poor David. OK, look, whatever her reason for doing it, she obviously thinks it's the right one. Octopus. Octopus and Mr. Chips. Well done, mate. Well done. You're getting really good at this now, Max. It's silly. <laughs> In my day, it was Janet and John going to the ironmongers or making a cake, so be grateful for small mercies. You OK? Yeah. Is Kylie up? She's just in the shower. Mum, mm -hmm. can you do me a favour? Sure. Can you take Max to school for me? So I can have a talk to Kyle. Yeah. Hey, what are we going to do about Max? I mean, are we going to tell him? No, I think it's too soon. Well, unless he asks. I mean, if he hears something said and then he asks, then I think you should tell him. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, what about anybody else? I mean, should we do a big announcement in the Rovers? Oh, it's too soon, David. Well, except one or two people know, and you know how news spreads. Not that I'd tell anybody. It won't come from me. My mother, the soul of discretion. <laughs> this well can be. I think I'll go put some washing on. Have you anything to add? It's already in basket. You are all right about this, aren't you? If you mean, am I going to change my mind again? No, I'm not. I said I love it, and that's what's going to happen. I'm really, really, really pleased you know that. I'd be stupid if I didn't. Oh, and stop cracking your knuckles, it's disgusting. Sorry. OK, fetch yourself a glass of water, and then it's night-night. Can we tell him? Oh, not now, eh? I'd wait till the morning. Oh, come on, I'm going to burst if we don't. <laughs> Sweetheart. David and me have got something to tell you. Over to you. Right, go sit down. Come on. Um, right, how to put this? Your mum is going to have a baby. Oh, I'll talk about breaking it to him gently. <laughs> really? Really, really? You're going to be a big brother? Wow. Right, now, before you ask, though, Max, we don't know yet if it's a boy or a girl. Yeah, so you've just got to wait and see. Oh. We have to share a bedroom. Well... No, of course not. We both have your own rooms. You can't put a baby in the garage. I'm not talking about a garage. We're getting our own place, Gail. We're moving out. <laughs> so, where's the So you're both really serious about this, then? Thousand percent. Well, I've just been going over the figures, and it's going to be tight, but it's definitely doable. Still won't be easy to get a mortgage, will it? I mean, with you needing a bigger place and all that. Well, then we'll just rent for the first few years and save up for a deposit. Yeah, and we're in miles better shape now. We've even paid off our credit cards. All the more reason to consolidate and stay put. How do you mean? You're a young couple with a new baby on the way. Added stress, added expense. You're going to need my help more than ever. Um, I appreciate what you're saying, and you've been brilliant. Yeah, massively brilliant. It's just time we stood on us on two feet. And we'll not go far. You'll see us all the time. Not the same, though, is it? Yeah, exactly, though, Mum. Everything changes. I mean, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm going to be a father of two. And that means taking responsibility. And this house is the past. I need to start planning my future. Our future. Mm. <laughs> Okay. That's a red. Oh, yes, please. So, what's up? I'll give you two guesses. We think David and Kylie. 
Am I so predictable? Ah, what have they done now? They've decided I'm surplus to requirements. So I, I don't quite follow. They're moving out. Find place they're on. Well, I suppose they'd have to fly the nest eventually. Yes, but it's just the thought of rattling around in that house. Maybe you should treat this as an opportunity. To be alone? To be yourself. You've been a dutiful mother. Perhaps it's time to be gay again in all her glory. Well, it would be nice not to always feel like a doormat. Right. Here's to me and all my glory. And to a new chapter in my life. Someone got out of the bed the wrong side this morning. Well, maybe I can help soothe the savage beast. No, I'd steer well clear of her, are you? You're not his mother. Can I help you? I finished cleaning. What do you want, a medal? No, I want to help. You look like you're snowed under. Yeah, I can manage. I am capable of a lot more than mop and bucket work, you know. But what about the bar snacks order? I could do that. There's really no need. Don't you trust me? It's not that. I am your mother. And if you learn to delegate a lot more, this place would run smoother. OK, fine. Uh, notes, crisps and olives. It's all written down there. Type it up, send it an email to the supplier. Can you manage that? I can. We need them today. They can normally deliver at lunchtime. I will make it happen. Fine, I'm going out for a couple of hours. I'll see you later. You didn't get any sleep. We should probably be getting back to the bistro. Well, Nick won't be back for another hour. Really? Hmm. And the delivery isn't due till half past, so you know what that means. What does that mean? That means we have nearly a full hour and an empty house all to ourselves. But a stolen lunch hour. When I, I, I never imagined it would be like this for our first time. Sounds pretty good to me. Shouldn't it be special? Oh, it will be special. No, I mean, well, I mean romantic. Somewhere where I can really spoil you. Somewhere where we can relax and forget about the real world for more than 50 and a half minutes. There is passion. Beating inside me. Because I know how incredible it will be when it finally happens. And when do you think that might be? Soon. Soon. Can I ask you to wait? I'll wait as long as it takes. I can't tell you how happy I am to hear you say that. And I promise you, Gail, it'll be worth waiting for. What's all this? Olives. Yeah, I can see that, but this must be the entire harvest of southern Spain. Whoa! Hang on, what are you doing? Delivering an order. Uh, no, but this can't be right. Nick's Bistro, Viaduct Street, Weatherfield. Yes, but... Yeah, same day delivery. Bar snacks and olives. But I ordered five jars. Five hundred. Oh, no, you must have made a mistake. Nobody orders five hundred jars of olives. Well, it says here there's five hundred jars of olives. What's going on? You can't leave these here. Don't mind problem. I'll unload the rest. The rest? Mum? I think there's been a mix-up. First, I am required to ask anyone present who knows a reason why these persons may not lawfully marry. I just deliver them. I've done my job. You should be a bit more careful when you're doing yours. I'm so sorry, Nick. Yeah, it was my fault. I checked the order, but I didn't see it was wrong. I could have sworn I typed in five jars. Maybe if I phone, they'll take them back. Yeah, once if they won't. Store them in my garage? We're going to be eating olives for the rest of our lives. I'll phone the company. Oh, Mum, please don't. Done enough damage for one day. Mum, please, please go home. If I say something, I'll regret. Now I know why you were terrified. Oh, it's you. Oh, well, don't sound too pleased. Was that for me? Only if you share it with me. I was hoping it was Nick come to apologise. Well, I'm sorry. I suppose it's my own fault. No, it isn't. You only tried to help. Um, hang on. Shouldn't you be at work? I've invented a dentist appointment, so I can come and see how you are. I'm all right. Look, sometimes it pays to care a little less. Mm. I wish I could. Well, I know you can't, so I can. I'm going to make you lunch. You don't have to. I know. 
I want to. So, what about us? Stop worrying about your kids. Not really, no. <laughs> you don't have to. I mean, the way they treat you. And that mix-up with the olives was my fault, not yours. Oh, it'll blow over. It always does. Yeah, but at what cost? More stress and heartache. I don't know how you put up with it. If I were you, I'd get right away from Weatherfield. They're grown up. Let them run their own lives. Believe me, I've been tempted. Well, there's a big wide world out there. Big wide world sounds frightening. Well, you wouldn't be on your own. Are you propositioning me? I'd like to. <laughs> so you're going to whisk me away and we're going to live happily ever after on a desert island? What about a small hotel in Tuscany? OK, here's the thing. This might be a crazy idea, but what if I accepted Patrick's offer? I thought you'd already turned him down. Yeah, I have, and this might not be possible, but if it was, would you come with me? To Italy? I told you it was a crazy idea. Go on, eat up. No, I'm sure she'll be happy. How can you look so calm? It's a mad idea. You'd see more of Sarah Louise there, wouldn't you? Doesn't she live in Italy? In Milan, yeah. You should feel free to live your own life. And from a completely selfish point of view, I want to commit to you properly. And I can't do that here. Not with Audrey in the background and all that history. I think we'd be very happy in Italy. You're asking me to abandon my family. I know. And I'm falling in love with you. You... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going too fast. I told you, I'm deep down, I'm a very selfish man. I can't ask you to make that sacrifice. You can ask me anything. No, no, I can't. Please, just ignore me. Forget what I've said. Look, you're right. I better get back to the bistro. Nick will be wondering what I'm up to. Yeah. I'll see you later. Why is she chatting? It's in the stock room. You can't move for the things. Ah, they'll get eaten eventually. Yes, but I'm supposed to be helping him, not adding to his stress levels. I don't suppose he ever gives your stress levels a thought, hmm? I don't own my own business. No, but you skivvy in his for the minimum wage. And you could be kicking your heels in Luca. Oh, don't. He has got a lot on his plate. Yeah, yeah. Olives, mostly. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Maybe I do owe him an apology, then. I love your rose-tinted specs, Gail. But once again, you must stand your ground. The, the only one apologising around here should be your firstborn for being so... so rude to you. And the pushover, aren't I? Yeah. Albeit a lovely one. <laughs> oh, here he is. Let's see what you're made of. Morning. Morning. What do you need today? Oh, Mum, please, don't start. Have you got something to say to me? OK, look. I'm sorry. Oh, hallelujah, the yeah. S word. I haven't finished. I'm sorry I went off at the deep end, but I think it's best you stick to cleaning in future. You know, you're a brilliant cleaner. Oh, plenty of strengths, you mean? The way I get right under the rim? Oh, don't knock it. Don't get ideas above your tabard, Gail. I employed you as a cleaner, remember? Yeah, I remember. I remember all sorts of things, like the hours I put into this For place. which I'm grateful. Oh, please. Oh, Mum, come on, there's a perfectly good job as a cleaner here. Take it or leave it, but I could do without the girl trip. Well, I think I'll leave it. OK, well, fine. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but that's your call. Nicole. You know, the world can be a danger. Yeah, I've been thinking about you all day, poor lamb. I thought Nick's conscience might have kicked in by now, but not a dicky bird. Uh, that chap Tyrrell from the wine suppliers, he dropped in at lunchtime. He and Nick have had a rather boozy afternoon. Oh. They were laughing like drains when I left. Oh, perhaps I shouldn't have told you that. No. I'm glad you did. The hours I spend stressing over his happiness and David's. Mm. Wasted hours, hmm? You sure I can't whisk you off to Luca? Is the job offer still open? Well, I could call Patrick, see how the land lies. Then you better get dialing. Really? 
I thought this lady wasn't for turning. Well, so did I. But, um... Well, it's all one way, isn't it, with that lot? Just take, take, take. Sadly true. Yes, well, this pack horse has had enough. Maybe I should just leave them to get on with it. Look, I, I know it'll be a wrench, but they really don't deserve you. We can lead a different life, you know, finer and simpler. It really is breathtakingly beautiful. I wish we could go right now. We'll be in Luca before you can say I'll take 500 jars. <laughs> <laughs> so this would have been... Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll have to take my hat out of the ring, won't I? Yeah, I'm sorry, Patrick. <laughs> Me too. OK, goodbye. He promised you an apartment. I distinctly heard him say. Well, when I turned him down, he let it to some American watercolorist. Anyone taking on the manager's job is going to have to find their own accommodation. And in Tuscan is best kept secret. That doesn't come cheap. Shame. Yeah. I have to be nimbler on my old pins next time. Yes, there is a next time. Well, why can't Kirsty move out? Well, now we know. Zilch. Nada. Nil point. I mean, a dream lifestyle requires dream money, and Gail, we simply don't have it. But it wasn't a dream. Well, not a fantasy, anyway. It was within our grasp. I pictured it in my mind. Felt the sun on your back. Smelt the jasmine. Tasted freedom. Oh, it would have been marvellous. Against my mortgage. Yeah, yeah, I, I moved in in uh, 91. Yeah, I bought my ex-husband out in 2001. But there's, there's still lots of equity in the house. Repayments over 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, it's Gail McIntyre, 8 Coronation Street. Faye was put Dad! Up you never said goodnight. I know. And then I realised I've got money tied up in this place. I mean, not oodles, but enough to give us a start. I mean, it's not as if I've got a high-powered career to hang around for, is it? Or, or a low-powered one. Come to that. So, I rang a loan company. Oh. I gave them my details and asked for a quote. Easy peasy. No, no, Gail, stop wrestling with it. I wouldn't dream of asking you to give up your house. But I wouldn't be. I'd be borrowing against it. Just a Lucas-sized loan. Loan or remortgage. It means dipping into your nest egg, and I wouldn't hear of it. Now, just chalk this up to experience and move on. I mean, Weatherfield has its charms. Mainly you. I mean, life isn't all bad. Huh? But you agree it could be better? Mm-mm. Stay and that. <laughs> Hello. Oh, you're in. Yes. I do happen to be the homeowner, on top of which I'm unemployed. What can I do for you? Is Kylie about? Who shall I say is asking? My sweet. One small mistake, one slip of the finger. I offered you your old job back and you said no. One slip of the finger. Right, can you give this to Kylie? Is that the rotor? No, it's the Elgin marbles. Well, I'd rather not touch it. You can give it to her yourself. Mistake. I could sell olives for the next 30 years and I still wouldn't get rid of them. This isn't about the olives. No, it isn't about the olives. So quit while you're ahead. Kylie, your boss is here to see you. You know, you're never suited to waitressing or bar work. Cleaning, fine. You're a natural. You were never suited to Leanne Battersby, but did I complain? Violently. All right, come on, touch gloves. So what I want to know is who's going to pick up the pieces when it all goes wrong, eh? When he suddenly finds himself single again with his understaffed and struggling, whose shoulder will he cry on? Well, not yours, hopefully. Did he go in all right? Yeah, fine. He fell off this in the playground, oh. but other than that, he's all right. Oh, is that my rotor? Yeah. Let me know if you want to change anything. Mm. David, Kylie. See ya. It's unbelievable. Well, Mum, come on. You did order eight million olives and refused to go to the bloke's wedding. He sacked his own mother. Case closed. Wish I had a pound for every time I turned to page 16. Is it yielding? What's a decal fitter? It's a salt line operative. What happened to the world I knew? 
Isn't it something to do with signs and signage, D. Carfitter? Anyway, it's not really your territory. Well, here we are. Cleaner. Macclesfield. More like it. Now, I'm sure God has something more exotic in mind for you. Well, I've always liked to travel. Gail. Just the person. Down to the last clue on this morning's crossword. A bespectacled character in On the Buses. Olive. No, thank you. <laughs> It was, a, it was a computer error, actually. Jason went in for a pizza yesterday, said he couldn't see the cheese. OK, so you know about the olives. Congratulations, I'm sure you're delighted. Uh, I'll have a donut and a cup of tea to take away, please, Roy. So... I hate this place. <laughs> I hate everything about it. You know, it's not so bad. You've got class, that's your problem. Everything around here is beneath you. As long as you've got a thick skin, you'll be OK. <laughs> Is that the best I can hope for? Let's eat out later, huh? We're going to town? What do you fancy? Italian? Sort of a drink. A friendly drink to clear the air. Hmm? Me and you? Yes, me and you and David and Nick, but Nick mainly. Or he could just say sorry. What for exactly? It was a technical error. There must be something wrong with the numbers on his keyboard. I'm not a complete idiot. I know how many jars of olives I ordered. Look, this isn't about the olives, Gail. I know it isn't. You can't stand his wife. I don't trust his wife. You didn't even have it in you to go to his wedding. I did have it in me. I did attend the wedding. But she stopped off at Peter Barlow's on the way. Oh, get you know which wedding I mean. She lost my trust on Christmas Day. OK. Well, are you coming for a drink or not? Well, I suppose I can spare ten minutes. OK, fine. See you in the Rovers, half past three. Kind of a drink. Hai degli occhi bellissimi. Hai degli occhi bellissimi. A che ora è l'ultimo treno? 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 Oh. Hello, Angel. <laughs> Did anybody see you? No. Is anyone in? No. Oh. What can I get you? Tea? Coffee? Me? Well, I'd love a tea. Oh, you. Followed by a biscuit. Mm, keep talking. Followed by you. Mm. What have you been watching? Oh, no! No! No, oh, don't look at that! Italian for lovers? Ah, oh, found it in the pound shop. Couldn't resist it. I got a phone call this morning. They've approved the loan. I can get the money in days. I told you, keep your money where it is. This was nothing but a dream. No, but it doesn't have to be. I could take you on a mini break. We could go to Venice, Naples, Rome. No, it wouldn't be enough. You wouldn't leave your family. You just wouldn't do it. So please stop leading me on, huh? I mean, Italian for lovers, it's more than I can take. I've got to meet my mum in the pub. David and Nick. Well, what's the rush? A che ora è l'ultimo treno? Um, when's the last train home? Uh, no. Uh, hai dei nocchi bellissimi. Ah, oh, grazie. Ma non belli quanto i tuoi. What does that mean? It means, but not as beautiful as yours. What are they expecting? An apology? Ah, that child. And after Christmas Day, I'm not surprised you're a little wary. I mean, is it a crime? Imagine them sat in their little booth, getting all hot under the collar. Like a lynch mob on a tea break. <laughs> <laughs> Let them eat cake. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to catch the train to Florence. I want to sleep in till lunchtime. I want to stroll along the Ponte Vecchio, whispering sweet neanties in your ear. Ti amo. Ti amo. Ma'am. Tell me this is some kind of sick joke, right? I'm afraid not. How long? The truth is, Audrey. We're in love. What's a big order? So, 
Were you together all along? It's disgusting. No, ma'am, of course we weren't. So you never cared for me at all, right? I cared for you deeply. Gail, help me recover. Recover? He was available. Yes, because of you. You put the idea into my head, you and that hag from the pub. I mean, you put the doubts into my head, and then this. You were fully behind that, oh. ma'am. You didn't trust him. You were willing to put him to the test. Lewis, what were you thinking? How could you do this to her? It's disgusting. He's done nothing wrong. It just happened, Audrey. We tried to fight it, and then to hide it. We didn't want to hurt you, ma'am. That was the last thing we wanted. Well, if you didn't want to hurt me, you would have never started this, lady. Oh, dear, I've heard enough, and I have seen far too much. Just to think, we were over in the pub trying to get this family back together. I was even prepared to forgive you. Aren't you glad we bothered? It's disgusting. Maybe you were right. Can I leave things like this? Well, they're not hell-bent on forgiveness. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? Everybody knows, they call us a few names, life goes on. If he'd sat her down and told her, we could have salvaged something, but now... Yeah, you're right. She'll never talk to me again. And who can blame her? She loved you. Passionately. Still does. She'll be crushed. She was pretty miffed. Miffed? Never seen her looking so shell-shot. Oh, God. Oh, here we go. So, what have the pair of you got to say for yourselves? Technically, David, we've done nothing wrong. Oh, come on. Went out with my mate's ex 18 months after she dumped him. She never spoke to me again. She weren't my mate. She weren't my flaming mother. Yeah. And it's not as though Grand dumped him. I mean, he left her in bits. You're a vulture, Mum. We all know you were desperate, but come on. I beg your pardon. Well, old pensioner's cast off. Hey, hey, watch it. He's a con man, a gigolo, your mother's ex. Can you set that bar any lower, please? I'm no longer a gigolo. She's on a third GNT. So what's the plan then? He moves in and you two live happily ever after, cos I'm telling you this now, not on my watch. This is my house. She's already got morning sickness. Do you think she needs to see you two necking and all? David. Mum, you better get over there now and sort it fast before you can. Am I doing what? Talking to her. Saying you're sorry. I've said sorry. We both have. Well then, say it again. Louder. Yeah. You as well, lover boy. Well, I suppose we can try. I don't see why not. Maybe I should do this on my own. No, no. We're in this together. Are you sure? It was my duty. You said chivalry was dead. Waving the white flag at home. They're here. <laughs> well, I don't know why. Well, let's just hear them out, eh? What can they possibly say to make it better, Dick? Can we join you? Go on. Well, I realise there are certain unwritten rules when it comes to this sort of thing. So what rules are these? Well, it could be perceived as bad form. We can see that, which is why we didn't do the decent thing. And stay away from each other. And sit down and tell you. We carried on behind your back, and that was wrong of us. Suppose we were postponing the inevitable. We knew this day would come, and we weren't looking forward to it. I'm sorry if we've hurt you, Mum. We both are. See, I can understand him, because he was born to seduce. But you? Frankly, I never thought he'd look at you in that way. <laughs> Consider that a low blow, Mum. Anyway, this thing has happened. And so we all need to come to terms with it as quickly as we can. Oh, right. So what do you suggest? That uh, we just get on with our lives? Like, I laugh it all off, right? And what do you suggest, ma'am? I suggest that you stay out of my way, the barrier. One large white wine in a fizzy water. Thank you very much. And is that all you've got to say on the matter? No! Mm. I've got plenty to say. Do you know, I'm getting just a little bit tired of this. You didn't trust him. You agreed to the scam. You proved yourself unfit for him. He was single. He was hurting. I was there for him. Lewis? Yeah, well, um, Gail's right. 
We had our chance of happiness, Audrey. You couldn't bring yourself to forgive me, Louis. All you had to do was forgive me. But you lied to me. I had every reason not to trust you. But you said you were going to meet an old friend. I mean, why couldn't you tell me the truth, right? You thought Gloria was ill and you were going to help her. I mean, if you believed that, why didn't you tell me? I was trying to do the right thing by a woman I thought was dying. But what about doing the right thing by me? Well, she told me not to say anything. Exactly. So you will take orders from another woman, but you won't trust me with the truth. I always trusted oh, you. Oh, do you know that is poppycock? That is just such sentimental drivel. Let's rewind, shall we? You left me high and dry at my own leaving party while you went sailing off halfway around the world with Peter Barlow's money. I forgave you, Lewis. Would she? Well, yes, I would, as a matter of fact. Oh, I'm not talking to you. For goodness sake, I've had enough. David, I've tried, but there's no reasoning with her. Come on, Lewis, we're going. You haven't paid for your drinks? Call the police. David's right. Well, I tell you what, Gail, the folk of walking the piazzas without prejudice. I know it's never going to happen, but it's a mighty tempting proposition. Maybe they're right. Maybe this is madness. Is what we're doing despicable? All I know is, I want you. And when I see the way they treat you, I want you even more. Oh, Lewis. It's OK. It's all right. Don't worry. I just want to be alone with you. Away from here and away from them. Yes, me. What of it? Um, Norris! Well, go on, then. What have you got to say? Give it your best shot. I don't know where to start. I mean, he's a prostitute who's ripped off your mother. He was, is, and did no such thing. Well, I've seen it all now. I mean, there is scraping the bottom of the barrel and then... Oh. Well, at least we weren't having it away while his mad wife was sat upstairs oblivious. The woman is dead, Gail. Have some respect. Yes, and who killed her? Because from what I heard, she was locked in the kitchen with a bowl of soapy water and a toaster. You know, I'd watch you back if I were you. Because when it comes to men, she's three dead and counting. How dare you? Spot the pattern. Get back to your glass house, Eileen. Just take her away. Come on, let's go back inside. I should walk away. Give you all a chance to regroup. No. Don't say that. They're more important to you than I am. I mean, what am I? I'm just the latest man to fall in love with you. You're much more than that. And this is just the start. Seems like a... a distant memory. And it was all there for the taking. It still is. Oh, Gail, please, don't tease. We can't stay here. We have no choice. I'll take out the loan. We'll buy an apartment in Italy. You can work in the hotel. I'll get a little job. I'll clean again if necessary. It's, it's too high a price. I mean, everything you'd lose. Your mother, your boys, this house, and all its wonderful memories. It's full of heartache and misery. We can do everything quickly and go. Gail, I'm charmed by your impulsiveness, but I wouldn't allow you to. No. I mean, it's your house, it's your money. It's our money, Lewis. Phone Patrick. Tell him you accept the job. Is that what you really want? Isn't it what you want? Lewis? The problem is, when push comes to shove, what else can we do? Te amo, Lewis. Te amo. Are you going to carry on seeing him? 
that I'm sorry if I caused you any pain. I really didn't mean Are you? Lewis? Yes. You know what, Mum? One day you're going to regret ripping this family apart. It's wrong. Let me do that for you, Kelly. That's it. We're definitely getting his own place now. What? It's a private conversation. Oh, I do hope you're not being sarcastic. There's a word not in my dictionary. <laughs> I missed you. How's it been in the house? I can't wait to leave this place. That's the spirit. In fact, I've got something to tell you. Please. Have you absolutely no consideration for other people's feelings? <laughs> not content with stealing my money after rub me nose in it every time I step onto this street. That's a bit of an exaggeration. Can you not get a man of your own, love? No, I don't suppose you can. I'm going to the bistro. I hate this. Well, the ends justify the means. Now, you had something to tell me. Well... Did the loan come through on the house? It pinged into my account this morning. Oh, that's excellent. I think it's best that we don't broadcast it around yet. OK. Yeah. I need to get my wages from Nick. Every penny helps. Yeah. Quite right. Hello, love. You here to work? Yeah, I'm, yes. Good. You've messed with my family. You're not going to mess with my business. Well, thank you. Are you mad? If I could just have what I'm owed, please. I don't want to cause any more fuss. OK. I'll transfer the money into your account. I've got your details on the computer. Leave it with me. I'm so sorry, Nick. I know you are. It's just such a mess. Right, I'm off to the wholesalers. Can you manage? Yes, of course. Good, uh, Kylie. Ma'am? I've nothing to say to you. Yes. And your, um, passport's up to date. Yes. I can't believe it's happening. And so fast. You've got a moment to lose. This is your time, Gail. Our time. You're right. Yeah. And the sooner we go, the better. Once you've told your family, of course. Well, maybe we should just do a flit. No, no, no. It's a tempting notion, but it's a little too selfish, and that's the last thing you are. See, if we tell your family... You will be there when I do it. Where else will I be? I'll feel a sight better when it's over and yeah, done with. I yeah. know that. Maybe we should tell them tonight. I mean, there's no point no. hanging about. No, 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 no. Let's, let's wait till we finalise everything first. And how long will that be? Well, uh, I'm waiting on one or two details, but it won't take long, I hope. Love you lots. Oh, I'm guessing you've not been Miss or PPI. Where's Lewis? Oh, I gathered. Do you know, I still can't believe you've hooked up with him, Gail, of all people. I mean, I hope you know what you're doing. Well, not as much as I do, because come Sunday, there'll be no turning back. What do you mean? Look, nobody knows, so if I tell you, it's got to stay between us. Consider my heart crossed. Me and Lewis are going to Italy. Really? Where are you staying? Somewhere in Tuscany. Depends where we buy our apartment. Buy? What, you're moving out there? For good? Or for worse, depending on your point of view. Telling the family tonight. Just hope they understand. Well, good luck with that one. How are you paying for it? Taking out a loan against the house. OK. Stay in. Somewhere in Tuscany. I understand. Well, good luck with that one. How are you paying for it? Taking out a loan against the house. You haven't given him access no, to... No, it's all safely in my bank account. Not that I've got any cause for concern. Haven't you? This is Louis Archer we're talking about. You're risking everything for a man who's... who's changed? Oh. Who loves me? Look, I know I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. It's not a basket, it's a flipping frying pan. You don't know him like I do. 
Nobody does. He's one in a million. Oh, that's a good thing from what I've seen. After everything I've been through, I thought happiness was for other people. What have I got to lose, Sal? I don't want to be left wondering what if. Better than wondering how could I have been so stupid. I'm sorry you feel that way. My mind's made up. Surprise? Yeah, well, I can't stay long. I need to get into town before the banks close. What for? Well, you can't run away without money. I need some cash, turn it into euros. I'll be back by five. Will you pick me up some flight socks on the way? I assure you, Gail, you won't be in the air for very long. No, I know it's a short flight, but better to be safe than sorry. And you pass a chemist on the way. All right. Before I get to the bank, I'm a bit short of ready cash. Oh, oh, well, here. Um, they're about um, a tenner, I think. Um, here. Take 20 and you can get a pair for yourself. Don't want you flaking out on me in Tuscany. Oh, I promise you, there's no chance of that. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I've told Nick about the family powwow tonight. He's coming and so's Kylie. What about the others? David will be here. He's nowhere else to go. And although my mam didn't promise, she'll turn up. She'll be too curious not to. Well, that's splendid news. Is it? They'll not give us an easy ride. Nothing worth doing was ever easy. Look at us. Well, if you put it that way. Hmm. How's the Italiano coming on? <sighs> Not very well. Can't concentrate with all this going on. Well, it's hardly surprising. I'd leave it till after the family conference is over. I intend to. Hard enough finding the right words in English tonight. Fancy a copper? If you make it a quick one. You are sure about this, aren't you? You're not having second thoughts. Me? Absolutely not. I haven't the slightest qualms about any of this. Nor me. Wonderful. Ma'am? Thanks for coming. Want a cuppa? Oh, no, thank you. It's come on then, Poirot. We've got us all together, let's hear it. Oh. Poirot. There's no mystery about what's been going on here. We know who did it, where, and what with. Ma'am, please. Oh, look, no, no, ma'am, please. Just say what you're so desperate to say, then I'll be on my way. I can't start yet. I need to wait for Lewis. Oh. Mm. No, I'm sorry. You two have messed me about for the last time. Wait. wait. Oh, dear. Oh. Yeah, it's from Lewis. He's, uh, he's been delayed. He says to start without him. Might be a good idea, Gail, just to get on with it. All right. Well, this might come as a bit of a shock. You what? After the other day, I don't think 10 million volts would top that. Oh, let her talk, will you? Lewis has decided to take that job in Italy. And I'm going to go out there with him. To live with him. We go on Sunday. To me. It's the hardest decision of my life, ma'am. Believe me. So what happens to this place, then? Secured a loan against it to buy the apartment in Italy. How much for? 40,000. Huh. <laughs> I might have known Archie wasn't sticking his hand in his pocket. He's making repayments out of his wages, actually, until this place is sold. You mean you're flogging it? What about me, Carly and Max? This is our home. Oh, what does that matter, David? I mean, she doesn't care about you anymore than she cares about me. That's not true. And you were moving out anyway. Yeah, when we had somewhere to flaming go. Mum, are you sure about this? It's a massive step. What is it? Uh, it's from Lewis. Oh. Tell Gail it's time for her Italian lesson. The DVD's on the second shelf. Enjoy. Italian for lovers. I bought it from the pound shop. It says Palermo. Well, oh, that is Lewis's writing. May I put it on? No, it might be private. Hang on, when you say private... I didn't mean in that way. Hmm. Hello, everyone. There's nothing like an after-hours nightcap 
Yeah. And I'm making myself a Bellini. There we are. It's got a lot in common with what I want to talk about. The Italians are famous for it. And it's best to serve cold. The colder, the better, in my experience. Now, I'm sure most of you have guessed what I'm referring to, but for Carol's benefit, it's revenge. You see, I'm afraid I've been rather a naughty boy. I hope by now Gail's acquainted you with our little scheme to cut you adrift and start a new life in Italy. I like to say she took a lot of persuading to abandon her family. Alas, no. As with my seduction, she didn't need asking twice. That's not true. Shh! You made it easy, Gail. Far easier than I dared hope. But did you seriously think I could ever love you? And what after what you did to Audrey and myself? You destroyed my best hope of happiness. So let me return the compliment. There is no new life in Italy, no job in Tuscany, and no money left in your bank account. Because by the time you watch this, I'll have taken it as compensation for what you stole from me. Which brings me to you, Audrey. You did what no other woman ever could. You made me... You made me happy and content. I truly was a changed man until Gail meddled and forced me to revert to type. We could have been so happy, Audrey. But I'm afraid this is our last goodbye. And that really, truly breaks my heart. I'm sorry for any pain this may cause you, and I mean you no harm. To Emma, my darling. <sighs> Kylie, I like you very much. You've got, I don't know, you've got something about you, and you could do a good deal better than that weasel of a husband. And you deserve happiness too, Nick. I hope you both manage to find it one day. Hey, look at that. The perfect cocktail. It just requires a toast. And this one's especially for you, Gail. Cicento ne fa una ne aspetti. Or as we say in this country, what goes around comes around. Mm. Exquisite. Ciao. It's gone to voicemail. Lewis. You just rang Lewis. I thought... You thought what? He'd pick up for a cosy chat. For good... Chances are he sent the text and then went swarming onto a plane. Well, I thought if I phoned him, maybe I could... He could what? Hmm? Change his mind? Oh, for goodness sake, girl, open your eyes. This has been months in the planning. Come on. He said he doesn't care for you a jot. He never has. All right, go easy. Why should we? After what she was prepared to do. Yeah, he fooled us all. He's a serial con man and he's good at it. Question is, what do we do now? How could you get away with this? This is my life. Can you blame me for grabbing at happiness? After everything that's gone wrong. I thought this was my fairy tale ending. No, oh, I'm sure you'd have lived happily ever after. With Prince Smarming. What have happened to the rest of us? I tell you, she'd have sold us so far down the river, we'd have been practically out to sea. All right, David, just leave No, me. I will not. She's perfectly happy to sell the roof from over our heads just so she could go and eat spaghetti with that off in those You're pumps. 22 years old, David. I thought you could be trusted to look after yourself. Yes, well, don't be too hard on him. You're nearly 55 and you certainly can't be. OK. OK. There's the bank number. You should bring him. Nick, what's the point? The money will have long gone. We don't know that for sure. He could have been playing games. Look, the account was in your name. Yeah. OK, well, look, he would have needed your bank details and your passwords, that sort of thing. Tell me you didn't give them to him. Uh, no, I'm not that stupid. Oh, well, you do surprise me there. Well, there's still hope. Do you think so? <laughs> Absolutely. Bring him. Nothing you can do. You must be able to trace him or... OK. Well, thank you. 
Well? It's all gone. Every penny. What about the 40 grand? All of it. He transferred it into five separate accounts this afternoon. But if he didn't have your password? He did. And my looking. Must have found me diary. You had it written down? Only oh, his back. They say I was negligent. That it's my fault. You don't expect someone to go rifling through your things, do you? Not if you're going out on the sly with a convicted con artist, no. Oh, just leave her alone, will you? Even took the money for the flight socks. Right, fine. Look, we need to ring the police. Oh, why? We've been drinking champagne in business class by now. She's right. Whoever it is, get rid of them. Look, we need to report this. The police can't find them if they're not looking. It was a courier. Mm. It's addressed to you, though. Well, who'd send it here? £9,000, repayment in full, Love, Lewis. 8950 9000 Plus the thousand is already repaid, and that was the amount I paid that penny to keep quiet. Well, that's about the last time he ripped off a love crest for... All right, David, it's not helpful. Well, come on, I mean, he didn't even change the scam she knew all about. It's all right, so... David. I'm a stupid, deluded old woman. Who could possibly find me attractive or what to make a life with me? Don't you think I've been punished enough? He's broken my heart. Drowned it into the floor with his built-up shoe. You wore built-up shoes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was him, wasn't it? Never quite what he seemed. Anyway, I've not lost everything, I suppose. Um, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? It's my money. I'm sorry, did I misread the envelope? Because I'm sure when I last looked, I could have sworn it said Audrey. It's, but it's my money. Yes, and that was a £10,000 that I paid Penny, which is now returned. Thank you. You can't seriously be intending to take it. I don't know what I intend to do right now, Gail. But I'm certainly not inclined to foot the bill for your self-centred stupidity, thank you, or for breaking my heart. Well, I'm sorry. You can't do this to me, ma'am. I'm your daughter. Yes, well, maybe you should have thought of that before you started sleeping with my ex. We never slept together. What? He diddled you out of 40 grand and you never even got to sample the goods? Oh. He might be a mile high, but I'm surprised we can't hear him laughing. <laughs> anyway. Good night, Gail. I know. Oh, um, There's not as much chance of tracking him down. We'll do our best. But he's got a few hours start on us, and he's clearly not making this up as he goes along. Add in the fact that he's done it before. Well, I'm not going to lie to you, sir. It's going to be difficult. Well, that would impossible, more like. Yeah. That's right. We'll let ourselves out. Well, that disc should give him a good laugh down at the station. Put back after we close. Give her a break, please. Anyway, Would have been the stars on that DVD. There you go, get that down. <sighs> Not sure I should. The start, I might never stop. Is that a bad thing? <sighs> Maybe not. Oblivion's never seen more enticing. I don't know, Mum. Could be worse. <laughs> How exactly? I have my whole future mapped out. It was a time for me. One last golden chapter. <laughs> you tore it all up right in front of my eyes. It humiliated me. He wrecked my relationship with me, ma'am. He's damaged our house. I've lost my job. I'm up to my eyes in debt. And I might lose my house. No, actually, when you put it like that. <laughs> He's destroyed me, David. I've lost everything. 
I don't know if I can get through this. But if I can, what's the point? What's left for me? That's it. Do you want me to run your bath? Mm. I've got some of that tropical rainstorm bath oil in the drawer. Help yourself. Might help perk you up. The thought of going out, facing people. Mum, you can't hide away in here. What's it's going to be worse? Shame of it. Everybody gossiping about me, laughing at me. Why don't you find the police? See if they've managed to track him down. Lewis is a professional con man. A very good one, apparently. Police don't stand a chance. Well, you've got to do something, Mum. You can't sit here all day. Please leave me alone. I'm finished. Daryl! Come on, lad, come to Daddy. <laughs> ding, ding. Round one. Oh, now, lady, you can turn around and go straight out that door. I have nothing to say to then you. Then please just listen. Gail, there is nothing you can say that would make this right. Absolutely nothing. Why don't you go in the back? Because she's not stopping. Just give me a chance, please. Gail, you and me are finished, broken, beyond repair. Just keep your voice down. Oh, why? Are you ashamed of yourself because you're flaming well, should be? I can't believe you're being so harsh. Louis Archer has made a fool of you in the past. I thought you, of all people, would be more understanding. Gail, if you don't leave now, I swear to God, I will throw you out. There you go. Can I sit with you for a bit? So, how are you? Destroyed? Oh, come on, Mum. You can't sit here drowning in self-pity. I really thought you loved me, Nick. That's all I wanted. Someone to love me. Mum, we love you, you daft bat. Your family. Do you, do you really? Because your grand doesn't. Not anymore. I tried to apologise to her. She wouldn't give me an inch. She's a... Uh, give her time. I let that man drive a wedge between me and everybody I love. He whispered poison in me ear. I believed every word. OK. Look, don't be hard on yourself. Lewis is a world-class cheat. In the cold light of day, I can see exactly what he was doing. Why couldn't I see it then? Uh, right. You've got to forget about him. Put it behind you and plan what you're going to do next. <laughs> <laughs> it's all such a mess, I don't know where to start. Well, you can start by sorting out this money thing. I think you should ring your bank manager. So he can laugh at me. Stupid, deluded woman who <laughs> fell for a combat. <laughs> you don't know. He might be able to help you. I told you it was pointless. A glass of red wine, please, Kylie. Oh, actually, make it a bottle. Call himself a bank man. He's only looked about 12. I think he's quite a decent bloke. Sitting there in his shiny suit laughing at me. He wasn't laughing he at me. He was laughing you. on the inside. <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? Not my hope of making those repayments. Well, you can start by earning something. Why don't you come back here and start next week? Thank you. I know you don't pay me a fortune, but it's better than nothing. I'll have to think about making them two pay more and all. Dropping the ocean, I know, but... I thought they were going to rent a place of their own. They can't leave me in the lurch. Not now. Not. They'll have to stay and they'll have to chip in more. That's going to go down well. Gail! What are you doing here? What does it look like? I thought you'd be sitting on some Italian pea pizza. Up to your eyeballs in spaghetti. Uh, I'll show you to your table. Oh! Another one bites the dust. Hey, well, at least Lewis wasn't a psycho, a thief, a liar, and a con man. Yeah, but a Oi! Pardon 
your backside's there. Just ignore her. You know what she's like. It's just the start of it. Could be the lucky stock of Weatherfield. Yeah, big man. Down the hatch. Oh, and if you eat it all, I've got some of that posh ice cream for afters. Brilliant. Is that the stuff that's over four pounds a tub? Yeah, what about it? Well, I, I'm just saying, times are hard. We're all going to have to make sacrifices. Well, I don't think a tub of ice cream's going to break the bank. Listen, David, you know I'm in a bit of a mess financially after everything that's happened. Yeah. So we're all going to have to pitch in a bit more. And I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to put your rent up. What? No way? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I mean, you pay much less than the going rate, so if I say charge you another hundred a month? What? No! It's, it's, it's not fair. Why should we have to pay for your mistakes? You can like it or lump it. It's as simple as right, that. Right, well, lump it then. We're only going to move out sooner or later. Maybe this is the kick up the backside we needed. You can't do that. Watch us. David, if you're not here to help with the rent, I'll lose this place. Is that what you want? Your own mother homeless after everything I've done for you? It's not my problem. I've welcomed Kylie and Max into this house. I bent over backwards for them. Is this how you repay me? It's your mess. You sort it. Don't blame me. Blame your grandmother. She wasn't hanging on to money that was rightfully mine. It's nothing to do with Gran this. If you hadn't decided to do a quick bunk with her fancy man. I did not do a bunk. And he was no longer her fancy man. No money for guessing who you two are talking about. She wants to put our rent up. Who's she? I'm your mother. Yeah, well, it's not happening. We're moving out. Right, hang on a minute, David. Gail, you know we can't afford to pay more rent. You're... Gail, you know, what's that supposed to oh, mean? Oh, come on. We all know that if you want something, you'll find a way of getting it. So what you're saying, I'm a rip-off merchant, is that it? If the cap fits. All right, do you know what? I'm fed up of being nice with you now, even though it's poor Audrey that deserves the sympathy. He's right, enough's enough. We're moving out. Yeah, all yeah, right, come on. Where are we going? Pub. Oh, where's Max? He's upstairs. All right, I just got to him. Oh, so I'm supposed to babysit, am I? Um, I'd have thought the least you could do. There you go. If you're going to try and bribe us, you've got to do better than spaghetti oops. Oh, for goodness sake. All right, Grant. Yeah, I'm fine. Hi, Mum. Come in. Yeah, I'm not stopping. Hi, Carla. Yeah. Now, uh, these two have told me about your problem repaying the loan. So I was thinking... If I give the two of you the money for a deposit, you can uh, get a mortgage and buy this place. No. Yeah. Buy my house. That is awesome. Thanks, Gran. Buy my house with my money. Yes, unless you've got a better idea. And where do you propose that I live? Oh, Gail, don't be so dramatic. Here, of course. Is there a lodger? <laughs> <laughs> Over my dead body. I know you are. I mean, I'm not. Sorry. But there isn't a person in this street who would blame me if I was, apart from you. Well, if you're going to bear a grudge, then... Look, you were going to run away with a man I love. Love? Oh, ma'am, you know I never meant to hurt you. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, I am trying to help you sort out all this mess you've created for yourself. And if they move out, you're going to find it a struggle to keep this house. Yeah, and Mum, you said it yourself. And if I give them the money for the deposit... No, then get a more. No way! I am not selling to those two and becoming a lodger in my own house. Oh, like we are, you mean? Well, if you don't sell to them, you'll have to sell to somebody else. And where do you think you're going to live, hmm? Seems to me you've got no choice. Anyway, I'm off. Uh, talk later. Ta, Audrey. Bye. Bye-bye. She'd sooner sell this house to anybody but us. Yeah, just let me talk to her, all right? Morning. Morning. Did you, uh, did you sleep all right? No. Gail, we're only trying to help you. Sell this house to us and we can carry on as we are. Sell it to just anybody and we're all out on our backsides. What Kylie means. I know what Kylie well, means. We're thinking of you as well. And Max, because it's his home. First proper one he's had. Let me just ask you a question. Fire away. Are you expecting me to sell you this house at a knockdown price? No. Of course we're not. We'd pay the same as what anybody would. And how can you do that on what you two earn? I actually think we could. Yeah, we'll have your rent on... on top. Mum, why don't we speak to someone yet who knows what we're talking about? If we get a valuation, then we could maybe see about a mortgage, because at the minute, we're just guessing, aren't we? 
Suppose it wouldn't harm. Hey, morning, my love. Red wine, Stella, please. Thank you. Still drowning your sorrows, Gail. Alcohol won't do it. It's work for you, after Nuno. Make it a large one, Stella. Certainly. Right, I'd best be getting off anyway. We've got Mrs. Newby in it. Oh, all right, sweet. I'll see you later. Right, now, let me get this. And, um, same again for me, Stella, please. Okay. Well, if you feel like buying me a drink, it's going to make everything all right. I think that we should wait till I've paid for these, and then we'll go and sit down, shall we? So why aren't you coming out by my house? You know I did. You were there. Yes, and why? Because it was a sensible thing to do. You couldn't afford it. But I could afford it if you gave that money to me instead of to them, which, incidentally, was my money in the first place. Yes, well, I don't think so. Anyway, I am not giving it to you, and I am giving it to them, so uh, let's not argue. Let's not argue? You make me a lodger in my own house, and you tell me not to argue? Yes, well, that's not going to change anything, no, is it? No, I might tell you something else that's not going to change. I am never, ever going to forgive you for this. Drop, we'll be up And you both from full-time employment? Yeah. And we'll have Gail's rem. OK, well, then I think I should ask you to fill some forms out. Oh, no, my spelling's terrible. Well, you can spell your name. Oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> ah. Well, Roger alert. Uh, Mum, this is Vic, the mortgage guy. Pleased to meet you. Oh. Welcome to my home. And very nice it is too. <laughs> Vic was just saying it's worth around 90k. <laughs> we told him you'd let us have it for 50. <laughs> uh, joke. <laughs> Which is maybe something we don't need right now. Do you have children, Vic? Yeah, I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old. Well, you're probably safe for a few years yet. But there'll come a time when they turn on you. Mum. Doesn't matter what you've done for them. They'll turn on you. Treat you like a useless bit of rubbish they can't wait to get rid of. You've been drinking? Is your mother still alive, Vic? She is, yeah. Well, don't trust her either. Cos altogether, they'll take you to the cleaners. Hiya. Hiya. I'll have a cup of tea. I'll uh, let you know if there's anything to report. Yeah, thanks. But you think we will be able to get a mortgage? Oh, with the deposit you're putting down, I'm sure you will. Yeah. Great. Oh. And thanks for the coffee. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Have a nice sleep. Shouldn't drink at lunchtime. Oh, not every lunchtime, no. Mm. So, what did your mortgage advisor say? Yeah, he thinks we'll be all right. Yeah, till your gran has to decide what's more important to her. Revenge or money. Anyway, I don't suppose anybody's done any shopping. I've been too busy. Yeah. <laughs> Deciding up to a mortgage that'll be round your neck for the rest of your lives. <laughs> I'm going to fresh go. The thing about lodges is you can kick them out, can't you? You know when we buy this place off you? Yeah? Mm. We'll be planning on making a few changes. Really? Yeah, like redecorating and that. Yeah, moving furniture as well, because he ate it like that. Well, funny you never mentioned it before. I never really thought about it. There is another thing, though. Oh, yeah. I'm moving into your bedroom. You what? Oh, it's okay, you'll be there. First, we thought you could go into our room. Mm. But then we thought, well, Max will like that, because it's somewhere to put his stuff on that. So then we thought you could go into the little bedroom. The little bedroom? Yeah. There's barely room for a single bed. Well, you won't be needing a double, will you? Well, where will I put my belongings and my clothes? Garage. Garage. Table for one. <laughs> I can't afford the bread and butter in here, let alone a meal. <laughs> So, uh, what do I owe the pleasure? Well, you know, I start work back here next week. Yeah? Well, I was going to ask him, um, is there any chance you could put up my hourly rate? I know that sounds a bit rich after everything. Uh, yeah, it does a bit. It's just that 
I wasn't going to tell anybody else. I've had a letter from the bank confirming that I'm being held liable for the loss of the money that Lewis took. So that's it. I've no other source of income. I'm entirely dependent on the charity of David and Kylie. I don't know anybody who'd give me a job at my age. Okay, so... okay. I'll see what I can do. <sighs> Thank you. And there's just one final thing. Yeah? I was wondering if I could come and live with you for a bit. <laughs> uh, you got the house? No. I've got the box room that Max used to sleep in. I come. Well, they've decided now that they're buying the place that they deserve the best rooms. After 21 years, you can imagine how that feels. Can't you talk them on? Evidently not. How long would you want to stay for? Oh, just until I've saved up enough for a deposit on my own. <laughs> Is that asking too much? Oh. Well. I don't think I can survive there, Nick. I mean... They don't speak to me unless it's to order me about. And, and if your grand comes, it's to see them. They ignore me. I took Kylie in out of the kindness of my heart, even though I didn't specially like her. And this is the thanks I get. And as for David, there's not a mother on earth. Okay, okay, okay. You can stay. Bring your stuff around to me. I'll never. I thought we decided to move out tomorrow. Uh, yeah, about that. You know what? I'm always here for you, right? Of course. <laughs> well, look, I've been thinking, you know, maybe it's best, you know, move in after all. You know, we're just adjusting to married life. Spare me the excuses. Look, if we had a bigger place... No, and... I'll find a homeless shelter somewhere. <laughs> Mum, you're not homeless. No, just unwanted. Oh, come on, try and see my point of view. You mean Leanne's point of view? Never thought I'd see the day. So what am I supposed to do now? Swallow your pride? As simple as that. What other choice have you got? Clearly none whatsoever. Thanks to you. Well. You're dead, mate, you. You still in the Yes, we lodgers can wear what we like, when we like. Um, the box bedroom needs a hook on the back of the door. Morning, sweetheart. Morning, Dale. It's Monday. You do realise that? Well, yesterday was certainly Sunday. So? Sorry? Max is going to be late for school. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. We'll ditch the conflicts, get dressed and like it round on Bessie Street. Please? That was the old setup. I'm a lodger now, a paying guest. You still is granny. I'm holed up in the box bedroom. I don't feel like anybody's granny, but hey, -ho, it won't kill me. And it's very nice to be free of all household responsibilities. You're running very short on loo rolls, by the way. You always take him on a Monday. I always take him, full stop. Are we still having stories at the sea, Gail? Ooh, wouldn't miss that for the world. Yes! OK, Gail, you've made your point. Now, will you take him to school? Please. This is a new dawn, Kylie. I'm just a lodger. For favours, I suggest you ask nearest and dearest and loved ones. Now, I've bagged this cupboard for my food and provisions. If you want to talk terms and conditions, I'll be in the box bedroom. All I ever seen. Yeah. Hello, clever boy. Do you have a good day at school? Pretty rubbish, really. Ooh. Shouldn't let Mr. Packham hear you say that. <laughs> I like you, care. You know I had to move appointments back so I could pick him up. Yeah, it's a juggling act, isn't it, parenting? Mm. Oh, um, me and Carly need a couple of shirts doing for work. No, no problem, I'll leave the board up. How long are you going to have this salt come for? I'll even let you use my iron till you buy your own. Mum, you're the one who's skinned and we've dug you out of an hole. For which I'm very grateful. Do you know what? I'm not having this. I'm off back to work. 
Aren't you forgetting something? Tatty, bye. Max? Well, come on, it's not like you're going out anywhere. I'm a lodger, a paying guest. The days of exploiting my good nature are over. Oh, what, so you're not even going to mind your own grandson now? Yep, five pounds an hour. I'll be happy to do the honours. Five quid? Yeah, you can take it off me rent. Now, am I leaving this up or not? Well, Carly don't even know how to wind a hanky. Then you have a go. Well, you never showed me. No, I spoilt you. Rotten. Oh, here we go. I've waited on you and them for blah, blah, blah. For which I'm reaping the rewards in the box bedroom. Mum, if you say box bedroom, Mum, it's just a flaming bedroom. It's a box room with a tiny radiator, a rickety bed and two outside walls. Oh, I can't be doing with this. I'm off back to work. Max! Come on. You're coming to work with me. Get your coat. Yes! If it feels like a box and looks like a box, it probably is a box. Oh, something smells good. Yeah, lamb stew and dumplings. You love your granny's dumplings, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, has normal service been resumed, has it? Well, Max needs to eat properly. Sent you back down, didn't it? Now watch cartoons. Right, after tea, go and hang your coat up first. Mm -hmm. Hang on, what's the rest of it? No, this is plenty for me. Thank you. Watching my figure. Don't worry, David, I'll make his tea. You're pathetic, you know that. Well, if you treat me like a lodger, I'll behave like a lodger, and lodgers do not make their landlord's tea. We're not even your landlord's yet. Good as. Uh, like I said, that's my cupboard, and I've locked it in case you forget. What's this? And please do not touch anything with a label on it. You say this? Don't rise to it, David, because that is exactly what she wants. I fancy pizza anyway. Where's the telly? What? I got Jason to move it upstairs. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's a wildlife programme on I'd like to watch. Would you like that, Max? Yeah. This sucks like a vacuum on speed. What do people do before tellies? Yeah, I don't know. Talked. We could play a game. Like what? Well, Max has got snakes and ladders upstairs. Xbox? Mm. Yeah. Oh, let's go pub. Who's going to watch Max? Well, can't Gail. Do you want to ask her? Bees! are so clever, you know? 20,000 of them, all living in one hive, all working to serve the Queen. They do this because they know that she gave them life. And they know that without her, the hive would wither and die. Bees are so clever. I'll give her flaming bees. Don't rise to it. She's just looking for a reaction. I'm not sitting here like this every night. We need a telly. I can't afford one. Max needs it. Well, maybe it might do him good not to watch the box all the time. We could read to him or play a game. It's telly. Or a divorce. Well, I'll see if Jason's got one from the flat. Right, we're well, going to ask him. All right, I will. Oh, Where are you going? Bed. No else to do. And I've drawn a line on the bottle. Yeah. Oof, nippy in here. Eating's packed in. Have you tried switching it on and off? That's computers. But yeah, I have. Mum, it's totally knackered. You'll have to get a bloke in. Me? Yeah. Have you seen our Max? He looks like he'll be going to school pulled by half a dozen huskies. He needs fixing today. I agree. Yellow pages under the stairs. What the hell's a yellow pages? What, Mum? No, I'm not solving this. I mean, I'll make a contribution, all right. A contribution? Oh, no, David. Your house, your responsibility. I'm going back to bed with my new Philippa Gregory. I know what she's doing. She reckons I'll crack first. Well, I don't care who cracks when. Just get it sorted. Thanks for this. Yeah, give us a call, mate. Bye. Oh, you found someone then. What, eventually, yeah? 
You know I had to drop two appointments so I could make this. Is that your gym back on? No, because you were just giving us an estimate, which, by the way, is a fortune. Oh, dear. Haven't we got insurance for the year? Um, I haven't. Have you? Me? I'm just the lodger. Oh! I knew this was in here somewhere. I'm taking it to my box, Betty. OK. We got toast or cereal. Cereal or toast. Or both. Half and half. Half cereal, half toast. Not your mum, are you, Nan? Mum. <gasps> that shower is freezing cold. Yeah, well, it would be because the boiler heats up the water as well as the heating. Why didn't you tell me? Well, why didn't you check before you got in the shower? Hang on, where are you going? Sally's. She's letting me use her facilities. Beautiful bathroom, lovely tiling, chrome fittings and gallons of piping hot water on demand. I have had enough. You get it fixed, now. Right, I'll sort it. So what do you want? Yeah, cheers, pal. Evening. Oh, nothing like a nice warm welcome. I don't mean from you two. Take it the heating's back on. So you finally saw sense. Max can't live in a cold house, it's not fair. It cost us 200 quid, though. No. Yep. And I had to use a credit card that's already maxed out because I'm having to shell out for the hairdressing course I'm off on next week. Do you know, I could get used to this lodger business. No responsibilities. Uh, you've got to make a contribution and all. I don't think so, Sunshine. I know my rights. In your mate. Oh, seems are still a bit damp. I think they'll be all right in my bag. I don't care. You're leaving us for three days. You think you give us stuff about the state of your pants? Kai. Well... Why have you got to go to London for this course? I mean, people have got air up here. Because it's the best one out there, and stylists come from all over the country. Yeah, I bet they do. If your permanent pension is in Walsall, you're not going to say no to a jolly in London, are you? Oh, how many times? It's not a jolly. It's getting it on that I'm worried about. There's been a lot of tarts in that classroom than in Greg's front window. Now you're being ridiculous. She does have a point. A straight man on a hairdressing course, like the end of Benny Hill. Who's rattled your kid? Just thought I'd come and say a fond farewell before I go for my shower. Well, the farewell's fine, but I'd swerve the shower if I were you, not unless you want pneumonia. Why, what's the problem? I thought the boiler was fixed. Yeah, it is. But sadly, if you want a hot shower, there's a window. And that window shut 45 minutes ago. Can't I just turn it on again? No. You see, it's attitude like that that's knackered the ozone layer. I'm sorry, at my house, my rules. David. You've got to live together while you're away. Don't be tight. Well, if we're going to afford this place, that's exactly what I've got to be. That'll be my cap. Isn't that a bit extravagant? No. I'm getting me back. Don't worry, Gail. Have this one on me. I'll switch it back on. Sorry, it must be a man thing. Uh, yeah, and I'm a man. It stays put, all right? I feel better for that show, I well, I reckon you've been kicked enough while you're down. I know what that feels like. Wish a bit of your compassion would rub off on this. Oh, but you thought you'd never say that. Oh, hello. Hello again. All right. Have there been any developments? We've obtained CCTV footage of Mr Archer making withdrawals from the bank. Altrincham, Wilmslow, Bramall, Hale. All around the airport, basically. So he has fled the country? He took a flight to Belize via the States. Belize? It's in Central America. Even if we could locate him, there's no formal extradition treaty. So there's nothing you can do? Not at the moment, no. But if he does try to get in contact with you or you hear anything, please let me know. Yeah. Sorry I couldn't give you better news. No, it's not your fault, is it? It's my own stupidity. I've been more nothing else. Anyway, I don't know. Come on, raise your eyebrows for her. What is this? No! Oh, Craig! I want a James Bond, not a big man flaming chair. Hey! That's Lewis's coat. And his cravat. Cravat? So? It's not our fault he left a pile of gear in our flat. Don't seem coming back for it, do you? No. No. So? Might as well make the most of it. Snow skin off your nose. I suppose not. You can burn it for all I care. You know what, babe? He always wore the best stuff. If you wax that lot on eBay, you'd make... Hey, hang on. If anybody's going to make money out of this stuff, it should be me. 
It was in our flat, possessions nine-tenths of the law. I have a better claim than anybody alive, Lewis included. And the police would have something to say about you stealing his stuff. Oh, I don't have any trouble. I feel a bit of a dork in this scarf anyway. And these boxes don't feel right. They're the pure silk. Yeah, well, you can keep them. But I want the rest. Oh, do you want to come and get a lot now? Thank you, Kurt. You and your flaming cake hole. What's going on with these shoes? I feel like Noddy Older. Oh, they're built up. If you want the boxer shots, I can always whip them off. No, you're welcome to them. Thanks for bringing it over. Oh, it's OK. Most of it doesn't suit me anyway. I'm more street me. Oh, I better give you this and all. It's all right, actually. It's dead warm. Well, you keep it. Looks good on it. Do you reckon? <laughs> Cheers, Gail. My dad used to have a coat like this, except he's Stankabonio. Used to keep them in his pockets for the dogs like. <laughs> Everything all right? No. No, I don't think it is. And Michelle, thanks a lot. Thank you. So how's things with you and Gail now? Oh, look, don't ask. You think when your kids get to a certain age, they'll stop causing you trouble, but in my experience, they just get worse. Oh, well, believe me, Audrey, that's the last thing I want to be. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> See ya. Oh, hiya. Hello. Uh, if it's a cut you're after, I'm fully booked. Sorry. <clears throat> Please, ma'am. I need your help. You what? I found something in Lewis's trousers. Is that meant to be a joke? Oh, it. It's a scrap of paper with my internet banking details on it. Someone must have found them in my diary and passed them on to him. I hope you're not suggesting I had anything to do with I'm not. No, it's not your writing. Not Lewis's either, but I thought you could confirm... Well, just think again, then. You've got some neck. You give the giraffes in Chester Zoo a run for the money you want. I know it's a lot to ask after everything that's happened. Look, it's too much and it's too late. That money's gone, Gail, right? And the sooner you face up to that, the better. Now, please, would you let me get on? I've got this client arriving any minute. Ma'am. Yes, Gail. I am sorry. <sighs> Whatever you might think, this was never about hurting you. I was torn in two. And I couldn't regret it more. Well, that makes two of us. I can't just... I'm oh, sorry, he's at the suppliers. Do you know when he'll be back? No, that's anyone's guess. But I know what state he'll be in. He takes his wine-tasting duties very seriously. Could I have a look at the reservations book? I just need to check something. Yeah, be my guest. There you go. Lewis is writing, isn't it? What, with all the loops and flourishes? Yeah. I told him I said he should write with a quill. You all right? Whose writing is this? The booking with the cross zeros? Oh, we're mad in town. We say people have got no money. Oh, I don't know. Some people seem to do all right. Go and play upstairs with her. So buy yourself something nice? Oh, I wish. Picked up a few bits Max needed, but never get past window shopping for myself. Oh, poor you. Weatherfield's own Cinderella. Still, you managed to find yourself a fairy godfather. And I do mean godfather. What are you on about? Why, Kylie? I've been good to you. I've stuck up for you. I don't know what you're on about. This, this is what I'm on about. And I know it's your handwriting, so let's not go around those particular houses, eh? I need to know why you helped him. I want an answer. And it better be a good one, because believe me, I fully intend to go to the police. Is it my handwriting? Stop lying to me! You were involved all along. You knew what Lewis was planning. No, you've got it all wrong. Have I? Have I really? I just want to know where Lewis is. You owe me that much. Oh, my life. I don't know. I don't know anything. And is that your final word? Yeah. It's the God's honest. Have it your way. 
you won't talk to me, you'll talk to the No, boss. no, Gail, you can't! Oh, you just watch me! <sighs> I always knew you were poisoned, Kylie. This is beyond the pale. Could I speak to Police Constable Burke, please? Please, okay. it's not what you think. Yes, I'm happy to hold. OK. I'll tell you everything. You've had your chance. Gail, I am begging you. For David's sake. Please, just hang up the phone. I'm all ears. You're claiming Lewis was blackmailing you? Basically, yeah. What about? Does it really matter now? Does it really matter? Oh, you're unbelievable. Yes, it matters. He stole £40,000 from me with your help by the looks of it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it to come out like yeah, that. Well, then you better start talking sense because I'm beginning to lose patience. What did Lewis know about you that was worth betraying me for? Well, let's hear it. I've already admitted to what I did, isn't that enough? I'm not even close. I don't want you to hit me. Then you better make me understand. I can't. <sighs> Fine. Then I will assume that you knew what Lewis was doing and you took a cut. David's wife or not, I'm going to make you pay for this. I hope the police throw the book at you. I slept with someone. That's what Lewis found out. I'm sorry, Gail. It was either you or my marriage. See, she's not lost her conversational skills. Evening. Table for two. Me and David have just had this stupid row, OK? I was drunk, angry. And who was this other man? I don't know, some guy. And where did you meet? Well, I can't remember the details. It's all a blur. And how did Lewis find out? Well, I must have stupidly given the guy my number. It, whatever happened, he rang me at work, Lewis overheard and put two and two together. I made 40,000. I didn't know what he was planning, Gail. You obviously knew it would hurt me. Well, like I said, he gave me no choice. Yes, you had a choice. You just chose the easy way out. You chose to let Lewis humiliate and bankrupt me to save your own skin. No, no, that is not I'm true. I'm not interested. As soon as David gets home, I'm going to tell him everything. Do you know, it's going to be almost worth the 40,000 just to see him finally show you the door. You're back early. Monday night's pickings a bit slim, were they? Hi, Mum. What are you doing here? Carly came to see me. Did she now? I needed to speak to somebody. And what she told you? Everything. And? I think we should hear her out. And that's it? That's all you have to say? Well, you better have a very good reason for sticking up for her. I don't care. Just... You weren't angry when you found out? Of course I was, but flying off the handle won't solve anything. Shows you care. I'm not condoning what she did. You could have fooled me. Oh, there's two sides to every story. She cheated on your brother and helped Lewis rip me off. I failed to see the other side. Kylie and David were practically separated when it happened. So that makes it OK? No, of course not. I'm just pointing out... You know, Kylie's been in a difficult place. Yeah. I mean, we had in bits. I weren't thinking straight. Where have I heard that before? Ever since you and David met, it's been one crisis after another. Kylie would be the first to admit it, you know? She's made some mistakes. She's a different person now. How can you say that with a straight face after what's happened? Because I work with her. Day in. Stay out. She's grown, she's matured. You don't have to stick up for me, Nick. Gail, I get that I'm not perfect, right? Tell me something I don't know. But neither is your son. Look, I wish I could turn the clock back to Christmas Day, but I can't. And yeah, you're probably right, David does deserve better, but the trouble is, I love him more than life, and he loves me. This family's had its fair share of heartache without you adding to it. Sometimes ignorance is bliss. Christmas Day? Sorry? You said Christmas Day. 
You slept with another man on David's birthday. It doesn't matter when it happened. But that was... eight weeks. That baby might not even be David. Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, Kylie. What have you done? Babies, do you want my son to raise for you? David is the father. Can you guarantee that? I use protection. Sorry, don't believe you. Come on, give her the benefit of the doubt. I don't have to give her anything. She's been lying all day. I'm telling the truth now. Why the abortion attempt? I, I was confused. Scared, more like. I thought we were over. I didn't want another child without a father. Uh, you've got an answer for everything. OK, we're going round and round in circles here. What's done is done. What's important is what happens next. You gonna tell David yes or no? No. Right. Kylie is. What? Mum. Not another word from you. I want him to see you as you really are. I want him to hear it from your lips. It's gonna destroy us. Exactly. Oh, blank me, why don't you? I've got feelings and all, you know. There's the tea. You have to look elsewhere for the sympathy. Can we talk? What would you like to talk about? The weather? The £40,000 missing from my bank account? Or what you've been doing behind my son's back? I just want a chance to explain. You've had it. And I'm not prepared to discuss it any further, especially in front of Max. If you don't mind, I'd like to have my breakfast in peace. Oh, you're a naked bless. You're back early. Got my shifts mixed up. Lucky you've got an understanding boss. Where's Max? At his mate Finley's. He's getting dropped off later. Get you. <clears throat> I know you hate me, but please don't make me tell David what I've done. It was a mistake. Yeah, a mistake David might have to live with for the rest of his life if that baby turns out not to be his. But it is, I'm sure no, of it. No, Kylie. You hope it is. And I'm not prepared to stand by and play the doting grandmother knowing it could all be a lie. You've got to tell him the truth. If I tell him, that's it. It's over. Our marriage, our dreams of becoming a family together, all of it. Well, maybe it was never meant to be. <sighs> maybe you're right. Yeah, I think I'll just see what's on the uh, cellar. <laughs> so she just quit. Pretty much. She told me she was home early because she got the shifts wrong. I swear that girl couldn't tell the truth if her life depended on it. And you haven't seen her since you two had her out? No. And I don't care if I never see her again. What have I from the beast chair? Well, don't look at me. I never touch no, her. No. She wouldn't. Wouldn't she? Aren't you going to answer that? It might be her. That's exactly why I'm not going to answer it. Everything all right? It's Kylie. She's had an accident. What happened? Well, she fell off a table at the Rovers. Fell pretty badly. Steve's taken her to the hospital. Uh, take Max to the salon. I'll get the car. Ashamed of myself. So you should be. That's not helping. What the doctors say? They've examined me. They think I'm going to be fine, but they can't do a scan on the baby till tomorrow when the ultrasound department opens. Probably waiting for you to sober up. Well, you show some compassion. This is your grandchild you're talking about. I'll wait outside. Try and get some rest. Where's Max? Gun's looking after him. Good. Hey, hey. You're gonna be home. Happy now? Sorry? No, I don't think you are. Don't 
you dare try and make out this is somehow my fault. There's only one person to blame, and she's lying in there stinking her booze. No, I don't think Davy would see it that way. Well, we'll soon see, won't we? What's that supposed to mean? Phoned him, left a message. What'd you say? That she fell, that she's in hospital. Why did you have to say that? Why should I lie to him? For Kylie's sake? No, you just try to cause even more trouble for her. She won't need me for that when he finds out. She will, one way or another. Kylie, oh, is, she, is she all right? Is she unconscious? How's the baby? Okay, yeah, she's asleep, don't worry. What have they said, though? Have they said anything about the baby? It's fine, it's fine. They're going to do a scan later. You look a wreck. Are you okay? Oh, well, I had a bit of a bender last night. I, mean, I didn't even get your messages till this morning. And then when I did, I got on the train straight away. Do you want something to eat? Canteen's still open. No, you said she had a fall. Mm. How, how? Was it those stupid trainer wedgings? No, 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 no. Nothing to do with that. W well, how then? She'd been drinking. What? No, she, she's pregnant. She wouldn't do that. You always give her the benefit of the doubt, David, and she really doesn't deserve it. Mum, that's enough. She's not the same you think she is. It's time you opened your eyes. Hey! What have you been up to, you daft cow? What were you thinking going out drinking like that? I'm sorry. I knew I shouldn't have gone to London. I knew you were worried about me. I left you loads of messages. You didn't call me back. Oh, I just panicked. I'm such a prat. I left my phone in my room. I just imagined the worst. I thought that one drink might calm me down and then one turned into two. Oh, and... it'll just be your hormones acting up and making you dead possessive and insecure. But listen, you've got absolutely nothing to be jealous about, all right? I love you so much. Oh, I'm sorry. I've, um, I've got to go. Um, Mum, listen, thanks for staying with her. It means a lot to both of us, right? Carrying on as though nothing's happened. Protecting the little slut. Oh, mother. Protecting her while my son sits at her bedside worrying himself sick. See, tell him. She takes Max away in the unborn baby. And you've destroyed his life. For what? I'll tell you something else. Secrets like this always come out sooner or later. Oh, shut up. We don't even know if the baby's going to be OK. No, David's got enough to cope with. And so has she. Don't you dare go adding to their misery. He deserves to know. And as soon as she gets the all clear... Leanne. How is she? Oh, don't you waste your worry on her. She'll bounce back. Girls like her always do. Oh. Any news? No, I've not told me anything. Uh, they're probably busy with Kylie. She's their priority. Well, yeah, but what, what the hell are they doing? I mean, they've been ages. Oh, I'll go and find out in a minute. She's in good hands, David. Why is this happening to me, Mum? I don't know, love. I mean, she told me she was pregnant. I was so happy. And now I don't know if either of them are going to make it. You can't think like that. Nick's right. You've got to stay positive. Yeah, but she means the world to me. I'd be lost without her. OK, you're going to drive yourself mad? You've got to stay strong. All we can do now is wait. It's my baby. It's got to make it. It's just got to. Ryan! I'm going to go and get some uh, if anybody comes. Yeah, I'll come and get you immediately. Do you want me to come with you? Uh, no, I'll, I'll be fine. I won't be long. How dare she? How dare she put him through all this? Mum, listen to yourself. It's not her fault she took a turn for the worse. Drinking while she was pregnant, falling over and hurting herself. The woman was a flaming liability. <sighs> I can't stand it any longer. Watching him shed tears over a baby that might not be his. I'm going to tell him. Please, Mum, don't. She doesn't deserve it. She made a mockery of their love the moment she slept with a mother man and tried to pass the baby over to David's. Yeah, what she said, the baby might be David's. And it might not be. He deserves to know. You're making a big mistake. Why are you being so protective of her? I'd have thought your loyalties would lie with your brother. You can't tell him. I can. And I will. Because it was me. The bloke Kylie slept with. It was me. You can't find out. Not ever. It was a mistake. That's one word for it. I could think of others. So after I broke up with Leanne, I thought I'd lost her. So the girl at the hotel was Kylie? 
I was in bits. She was in bits. We were both drunk. We never meant it to happen. How could you? You're not listening to a word I'm saying. You no, know, I'm listening. I can't believe my ears. I don't care what the circumstances were. The child she's carrying could be yours. Not necessarily. No wonder she wanted an abortion. Could be David's. Probably is. What a mess. So you see why you can't tell him. And I can't lie to him. Not now. Not after this. Um, any news? Oh, she's still in there and won't tell me any more. Look, <laughs> I'm sure she'll be okay. If yeah, she's been in there ages. What if she has lost the baby? Internal bleeding. Well, is she going to be all right? Yeah, luckily, we caught it early. She should be fine. And what about the baby? We don't know yet, I'm afraid. How do you mean? We need to do a scan, and we can't do that until Kylie regains consciousness. Look, look, I, I just want to know if my baby's OK. You need to calm down. Call us as soon as she comes round. This is all my fault. No, it's not. What if I hadn't gone to London? I'm dry. i to stop blaming myself. I sometimes forget how fragile she is. Really? If the doctor, she's gonna be fine. Yeah? But what if the baby isn't? Then we'll get through this somehow, as a family. Mum? Okay. I can't stand this hypocrisy anymore. It's what you can do. You can tell him now? Well, there's never gonna be a good time to tell him, so the sooner he knows, the better. And what good will it do? He'll know the truth. You're destroying him. And his marriage, and my marriage You shouldn't have thought about your marriages before. Lee has the love of my life, and can't he's stupid. This just proves what I've always known. Oh, God, what stupid mistake. So you keep saying. It's not like I'm in love with her or having an affair. Why have we ruined four lives over one because drunken night? Because you're lying to him. He'll never speak to me again. Do you want to be responsible for splitting your family? Do I want to be responsible? How dare you? I just you? want you to see Santa. That baby could be yours. And it's probably David's. If Kylie and David split up, she's going to take that baby far away. Then none of us will see it grow up. I can't sit back and do nothing. I can't. OK. So you tell him. What do you think he's going to do? Can't we sit back, think what's best, what's the most rational option? Or go completely off the rails, end up in prison or mental institution? It's your call. I'm going to tell you that from now on. In fact, there's a lot of things I'm going to do different. Just please don't do this to me again, Kylie, please. David. What? What? <laughs> Kylie? <laughs> Kylie? <laughs> Mum, go get a doctor, quick. <laughs> Kylie? <laughs> Kylie, look at me. <laughs> Kylie? How is she? Well, I think she's coming round. <laughs> what are you doing here? I've just come on shift. I heard she might need a scan. <laughs> It's all right, it's all right, don't worry, OK? The doctor's coming, you say. Hello? Kylie? You ruptured your spleen and suffered some internal bleeding, but we managed to get it under control. And luckily, we didn't have to remove it. Is the baby OK? Can we you have that scan now? Yeah, I'll go and get the ultrasound if that's OK. It's fine by me. What's going on? Listen to me, Kylie, all right? They don't know if the baby's OK. <laughs> but we'll find out soon enough, all right? <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Kylie, don't worry. You heard Marcus, all right? Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> or her. I think I prefer a girl, actually, but... <sighs> Mum, I don't care. I'm sorry, Lee. This has been the worst 24 hours of my life. <laughs> Is that what you think I am? Some Family cheap tea, You don't even need to get out of bed? Anything else you need? No. That's enough. Just you, Maxie, and this baby. No double meat face. <laughs> I'll see you later. See ya. Look after it. Hey, Gail. She knows. What? Yeah, everything. I know about you and Nick. There's only way of stopping her telling David about your betrayal. Are you gonna tell him? Are you? <sighs> no. Oh, thank you. 
and thank me. I'm not doing this for you. Either of you. Mum. Don't call me that. Not right now. Gail, I'm so sorry. We never meant for it to... I don't want to hear it. I will keep your sordid little secret. But the only reason I'm doing this is for David. If either of you hurt him ever again, I will expose you for the hypocrites you are. Is that understood? Good. I don't want to look at you anymore. about your mum coming on today. Can't wait. I know, it's brilliant, isn't it? You all right, Mum? Yes, I'm fine. Right, Max, can you go get your school bag, please? Because, in fact, that'll be my gran now and she's taking me to the hospital so we can drop you off on the way. Come on. I don't know why you don't just roll out the red carpet for her. What do you mean? Will you give her my picture? Yeah, of course I will. She's going to be over the moon by it, but come on. Sweetheart, I couldn't find the keys. <laughs> Are the wagons ready to roll? Yeah, Max is just getting his school bag, so it'll be a couple of minutes. Morning, Gail. She's in one of her moods. Oh, morning. Oh, look. Oh, I say, isn't this lovely? Oh, yes. All that's missing is the halo. Do you know, whatever you think of Kylie, Gail, she's David's wife. Which is why I've given her so many chances. But now I... What? It doesn't matter. Deary me! Look, whatever she's done, she is bringing our flesh and blood into this world. There's no denying that. Your grandchild, my great-grandchild. Yes, OK, she's made mistakes, and this last one's a pretty big one, but it's up to us to help her through it all. OK? Oh, really? Suit yourself. Morning. Morning. Hi, girl, you all right? Oh, yeah, just uh, wanted to get out of the house before Kylie got back. Oh, why? Oh, she's always bossing everybody about you and wagging a finger. Oh, it's all about her, isn't it? Always. Of course, you and I know why I'm really here. Look, uh, I don't think coming here is the best thing to do. And I live under the same roof knowing what I know. I've just got to try. I hardly slept last night. Poor David, the other side of the wall, knowing less about the state of his marriage than his own mother. Um, you've got to stop obsessing about it. Why did you tell me? I wish I didn't know. How can I unknow? You've put me in an impossible situation. Mum, listen. You can't tell David. It would kill him. It would. But it's killing me, Nick. It'll get easier. I promise. Yeah, and I said it'd be ten minutes, didn't I? Ah, there you are. Been looking all over for you. Mm. Well, Nick offered me some lunch. All right, well, don't make it a big one. Hi, right, David. Yeah, you. Why? Well, I thought I'd make a big family tea for us all tonight. I was going to go ask Gran. You all up for it? Oh, um... I think that's a great idea. Oh, well, we can't both have a night off, but you go. All right, great. That I'll make a start in the kitchen, then. <laughs> How easy was that to get out of? <laughs> Wish it had been that simple for me. we just have to keep everything normal. It'll be fine. You'll see. Man, that's right. Because nothing else. Hi. Hiya. Hiya, Gail. Kylie? Something smells nice. Where's David? Oh, is he not here? Maybe he just pops the shops or something. Can I get you some water? Uh, no, thanks. I've already got some. Can't believe David's cooking for everyone. No, no. It's like all of a sudden I'm married to Jamie Oliver. Oh, he's been dead good to me. So what's holding him Eric, back? Eric, no, she's only with him for his money. 
Oh, shut up, Eva. Which is why he's asked me to go away with him instead. What? And get your GT. No, thanks. You're not having one. I don't want one. Glass of wine? Something soft? I'll have some with me dinner. Something soft, Kylie? No, I'm all right with water, thanks. Got any limes? No. Lemon? There's half a one in the fridge. Oh, mind if I use it? Look, I really don't think I can do this. Can you do this? Do what? Dance around, playing happy families? Mum. Making out everything's OK when actually... It is OK. We've been through this. Well, actually, she might be carrying your child. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's the best news I've had all year. I mean, I can see this being really straightforward. Gail, look, I know it must be really hard can to you get sleep you at night. Can you? I'm asking you a question. Can you sleep at night? Because I know I can't. Mummy! Are you telling me? Max, you do me a favour and go upstairs and wash your hands. I'm just saying I'll... Yeah, I know. Just please. What the hell are you doing shouting at her like that when she just come out of hospital? She weren't shouting at me, baby. We're just chatting. Chatting? I heard what she said. Good. Because it's time you knew. Knew what? That I'm the only one around here who cares about you. Mother. Knew what? If you cared about him, if you had one ounce of respect for him, you'd have got rid of that child when hey. you had the chance hey. and you hey. had What the hell do you mean by that? Are you going to tell him? Or shall I? Well? Can we just try and calm down? Tell me what? Mum, why would you say something so hurtful? I don't want to hurt you, David. I have been on this planet a lot longer than you. I know this baby isn't wanted. What are you talking about? Of course it's what we want it. No, you might want it, but does she? She has got a name. She didn't want it from day one and she doesn't want it now. All oh, right, and, and how do you know that then exactly? And you read people's minds it's now, can you? all over her face. What will you tell her? She's entitled to her own opinion. Oh, what, so it's true, is it? I think what Gail means is that I'm scared. Yeah, we're all scared. You're not scared. You're unstable. Mum, don't you dare talk to her like that. I'll talk to her anyway, I see fit. No, Mum, you won't, and you've got it in for her, but it's not fair. Oh, what's going on now? Oh, David appears to be laying down the law. Yeah, he is, and you can start by apologising to Kyla. Oh, for my dead body. She doesn't have to do that. Yes, she does. She's a bully. <sighs> Drink, Gran? Oh, G and T. Please. One day, David, you will realise that out of all of this family, I'm the one who cares for you. Oh, it's a competition now, is it? Get out. Sorry? I said, get out. This is my house now. And I'm not having you kicking off with Kylie all the time like she's the devil or something. I've asked you to apologise. You've refused. So I don't want you here. I will not be apologising to that. Right, little... well, you know where the door is. Oh, David, do you think this is really nice? Grant, I'm not having to stand there slagging off my wife. And when I ask her why, she says it's what? Because she loves me. She's off her head. You can't be serious. Apologise. I can't. So you've said. And I've said. Get out. David chucked me out. What? I know. 
Why would he do that? Well, put it this way. If he knew what I knew, it wouldn't be me he was chucking out. Do you want to come inside? I've got some wine in the fridge. Come on. Come on. You know more than most. You don't get many of them. You know when you've thought about something so much that when you try to say it out loud, you actually can't find the right words? In fact, I'm not sure I can string a sentence together about this. Well, it was something about if David knew what you knew, it wouldn't be you who was kicking out. I mean, what did you mean by that? I mean, it's none of my business if you... Sal, if I don't tell someone, my head's going to explode. What? Well, what is it? Kylie's baby it might not be David's. No. And that's not all. What? It might be Nick's. Shouldn't be long now. I came this close to coming out with it. Oh, I'm glad you didn't. Well, if it hadn't been for Nick looking at me, pleading, I'd have said something, Sal. But if it was just a one-night stand and not a proper affair? So they say. And you believe them? Yeah, I do, actually. OK, say you go over there now and say you tell him the truth. Mm hmm Think of all the people that you're going to hurt. David, Leanne, Nick, Simon, Max, even Kylie, of course. Don't care about her. But the biggest person you're going to hurt... Who? ...is you. I don't care about me. I care about them. They're my life. And that would be blown apart forever. If you keep the secret, you keep them. Why don't you stay here with me until you decide what you want to do? You can see why it's so difficult for me to be over there. I would like to hang on to my stylist, please, Nicholas. <laughs> do you like it, Max? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Mum. I've just come to get some stuff. Mum, Mum, wait, look. You don't have to go. Yeah, David, sorry you snapped, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, I've been thinking and... Uh, my family is very important to me. Well, join us for a family meal then. And I know we all make mistakes, but... we seem to be always at each other's throats. And it's not what you need right now. It's not what any of us need, so... I'm going to stay at Sally's for a bit. Mum. I really think it's for the best, David. Mum, Mum, wait. Look. I know you're not impressed with what Kylie did. I know she did a bad thing. But I'm just trying to keep things positive. I really think it's for the best, David. Mum, please. One day, you'll understand. Will you stop patronising me? It's because I respect you that I'm leaving. Stay here for as long as you like. I don't see how I can never go back to that house ever again. I know you feel like that now, Gail, but. Morning! Oh, hi, Gail. Hi. Morning, love. Gail's gonna be staying with us for a while. I, I, I meant to let you know last night, but 
write you a note and I couldn't find a pen that works, so. All right. Is it all right if I use the bathroom now? Yeah, of course. I don't want to hold anybody up. No. All right. Hello, David. Would you like me and Sophie to leave you alone? No, no, you're all right. No, everything I've got to say can be said in front of witnesses. Look, I think all this is a bit daft. You here when your house is next door but one. It's not my house anymore, though, is it, David? Well, it's still where you live. No. I'm living here now, thanks to Sally's generosity. Mum, I'm sorry we fell out. Can we just forget about it and you can come back? Well, I suppose I'm glad to hear you say that. Yeah, you must be. But it's not that simple, David. There are reasons I can't come back. What reasons? Mum, what are you on about? I don't want to talk about it right now. I think enough's been said already. Oh, do you not think it'll be better if you're back with your family? Excuse me, has this got anything to do with you? I don't know what else I can say. Me neither. Let's just leave it like that, shall we? Amazing. All right, well, I've asked her. You both heard me. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and you heard what she said. So there we are. I'll leave you to it. You're right. Poor David. If it's poor David, would you not just go back and live at all? Hey! Well, I'm sorry, Mum. I know you always say it that I don't understand, but yeah, you're right this time. I don't. So will that be all right? Yeah, come in. Hi, Jenna. Hi. Um, Mum, Jenna's got a tartar right that she wants to keep in our back garden. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. But can you not tell anyone? Because Lloyd thinks that he's killed it and they don't want him to know that he hasn't. Oh, thanks. I know what we said, but I'm his mother. Shouldn't I tell him the truth? No. And what if one day he finds out and finds out I knew all along? And what, which is much more likely, if he never finds out, the baby's born, he brings the baby up as his own and everybody's happy. Do you think that's possible? Yes. And you have to think that too. Morning. Morning, Gail. Hi, shower, Gail. Do you know, I don't know how you manage with that water pressure. Oh, I know. Somebody in Greater Manchester turns a tap on and our shower's reduced to a trickle. I miss my power shower. Oh, dear. They misses you too. You all right? Yeah. <sighs> oh, you're in. I was hoping you would be. I've been having a little think. Why don't we take it in turns cooking? You know, draw up a rotor. Because I've got my recipe book written down off the telly and, well, let's face it, this arrangement ain't gonna last forever, is it? So we might as well enjoy it while we can. Okay, but I... how was work this morning? Because I'm having a dreadful day. The way Leanne speaks to me. And Nick says nothing, just stands there, catching flies. Ooh, is that a kettle boiling? I could murder a couple. And another thing. Did I tell you about my mother? He says, please do one more cake. I'm begging you. Hi, Sam. Oh, hi, Dana. Well, I'd go first. Got all sorts. Nice bit of lamb, if you fancy, or some fish. Uh, well, it's a bit difficult. And tonight. a bottle of Rioja to go with it all. And then for dessert, we've got sticky toffee pudding or rhubarb pudding. Well, the thing is, I've, um, I've promised Sophie that I'd take her out tonight. Um, are you going somewhere nice? No, not really, just the bistro. Well, we're going to the bistro. Sometimes it's nice to spend a bit of time with your own. Hiya. Hi, Sarah. I bet you're looking forward to it, aren't you? To what? Uh, going to the bistro tonight, just you and me. Yeah, I was just telling Gail how it's been a while since we've had a, a good old catch-up. Yeah, can't wait. Just me and my mum, the bistro and a good old catch-up. I'd settle for a civil word with my luck. Wonder if I'll ever have tea with David again. Oh, I'm sure you will, Gail. Oh, well, another meal for one, I suppose. Well, at least you've got your Rioja. 
legs. Oh. That's all. <laughs> Golden legs, you even noticing that makes you a little bit gay. <laughs> Sophie, I am not gay. I'm just trying to make Jenna feel a bit more comfortable. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, Sally's just an eye of sexuality. <laughs> I thought you were going to the bistro for a bit of mother-daughter time. Well, we were going to, but then Jenna gate crashed. I didn't think I could stretch to treat them both of them. Obviously, I, I also would have invited you along. <laughs> Double date. <laughs> well, we've actually finished here, so why don't I ditch these two and uh, treat you to a glass of wine in the bistro? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, if it's OK with you. Ooh, buying drinks for another woman in a wine bar, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure there's no candles on the table, does she get the wrong idea? <laughs> Pounds on your gale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on. I just keep seeing his smug face. Who's? Well, who's do you think? Lewis. Hit you quite hard, that, didn't it? Well, I can stomach most things, but humiliation's not one of them. <laughs> well, not too want of trying. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Come on, Kelly, you've had your fair share. You can do it. And the facts don't always flatter us. No, well, <laughs> it's an understatement in our case. And there's Eileen. Everything. Just landed in a lap like a pig in muck. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, he was already married once you when he met her. She's loaded lucky with him, but... Well, it's not my time. He's too normal for you. <laughs> Do you fancy him? Paul? No. Imagine saddling yourself for life to Eileen Grimshaw. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather our arrangement. Eh? The liver bird? Uh, yeah. I know I'm in the way. No, you're not. No, I know I am. But I'm ever so grateful to you for having me. And... I've got some flat viewings to start next week, so don't despair. Get on. The end's in sight. But I have enjoyed it. Bit of adult company. It's been a tonic. Anyway. Yes. Anyway, indeed. Cheers. Cheers. To friendship. Make some stuff up and then we're off to the hospital. Will you give Stella my love? Well, yeah, I could do that. I don't think she even knows we're there. This has got to be so tough on you as well. I'll get you those keys. What? Oh, cosy? His mother-in-law's lying flat in a hospital bed. Yes, I'm well aware of that. Well, if you hadn't packed your spotted anky and stormed out, you'd see the difference. David's all I'm interested in. Nick's my boss. No more. Boss? Brother-in-law? bit on the side. It's not me that gets them mixed up. Ancient history. I love David. I'm carrying his baby. I know I am. Hoping isn't knowing. But you act like you know it's not his. What if you're wrong? What if you blow apart our marriage and Nick and Leanne's and this all turns out to be one big mistake that we could have all got over? I'm keeping out of it. But you're not though, are you? By living at Sally's, you're upsetting David. You know, he asks questions, thinks you're overreacting. It's almost as if you want to have a big kick-off. Believe me, I don't. I love David. I know I can make him happy. Can't go backwards, can we? Even when you know what you're going to see. I thought our lives were a mess. You are right, I suppose. About what? Well, you can't go backwards, can you? Maybe I should buy myself a moving back in prison. Are you moving back? A great big rug to sweep things under. I know it started off wrong, this pregnancy, but well, if I keep doing everything right and then right and then right, that wrong's got to get smaller, hasn't it, in the scheme of things. This baby deserves that. I don't think a wrong gets smaller where a baby's concerned. What I know about these things is a baby just keeps getting bigger. Yeah, but what matters most is it knows where it belongs. For me and David. Do you want Andrew moving your stuff back? Managed. But don't think I'm taking my eyes off you, not for one second. OK, hey, help yourself. It's enough to see. Brownie's on us. Ooh, brownie now, are we? And what badges did you get? Cheating and lying under surveillance. 
there isn't anything you need. You wouldn't have even thought about it if Gary and Izzy hadn't found out about their baby. Uh, look, come on, it'd be nice to know if it's a he or a she. You know, we could pick a name, get pots of pain, or his slash her slash their room. I ain't twins. You better show me that scam photo. Oh, can't we just wait till it's born? You see, there you go, it. I mean, if we knew it was a he or a she, we wouldn't have to talk like it's a, a, a pet lizard or a pack of frozen peas. David should have a say in all this as well, you know. Here, here. Having said that, it might be nice to wait. More fun. Yeah, well, you like surprises, I don't. Right, grindstone. Can I pee? Not your phone, is it? Uh, no. It's under here if anyone asks. Oh, finally! I was beginning to think you weren't going to bother. Meet your future grandchild. Oh. Oh, that's lovely. And what did you decide about finding out whether it was a boy or a girl? We decided against telling you. Why? Well, you said you like surprises. So you know. Yeah. It's uh bu 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 ga 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 bu bu bu. I'm gonna have to kill him. <laughs> but everything's all right. I mean, you're all right. Yeah, they were a little bit worried about your blood pressure, though. Only to keep an eye on. Yeah, well, all the same, I think it's wise if we start looking for maternity cover ASAP. Whatever Kylie wants, we'll manage. No, I don't want. All right, well, we'll vote, then. All those in favour of you working and against. All right, you see that? She raised an hand. <laughs> oh, she... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, a beautiful little girl. Perfect. Is he OK? Gone to work. Well, I just saw the post for not so. That DVD I ordered came then. <laughs> what have you got in there? It's a cot. A cot? Couldn't we have discussed this? I wanted it to be a surprise. Well, mission accomplished. I hope you don't expect me to put the thing together. I can't even do Lego. <laughs> no, I thought I could pick Max up from school and bring him home during his dinner and we could do it together. You know, just involve him a bit more. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, it is. Come here. I just think ever since the scan, everything's been dead real, you know, and I can't wait to meet this little one. I just want us to be prepared. Well, we need at least one wage coming in, so you better get to the salon. Yeah, all right, I'll see you at dinner. Bye-bye. Yeah. He's going to make such a good dad. Let's just hope the baby's his, eh? <sighs> a quiet life, OK? She's hungry. Hi, babe. How was work? Uh, yeah, great. You look exhausted. I'll go on me to you. No, it's all right. I'll do it at your rest. No, I've done it all day. Oh, that's certainly true. <sighs> Not long now. Oh, can't wait. I'm fed up with feeling like a giant space hopper. No, you're just a little space hopper. Hmm. Actually, I am going to go for 40 winks. OK. I'll see you in a bit. I do feel bad, you know. What about? There's so much to choose from. Well, should I tell him to stop working at the bistro? I don't think it'd make any difference. He wants to prove he's strong enough to look after his family. He didn't have to prove out to me. He knows that. To you. To himself. I could have a word with Nick. I think you and Nick have done quite enough behind David's back. Well, then what should I do? Just be kind to him. Thank you, lucky stars, you've got such a devoted husband. My mother's behaviour appears strange to you. I think stranger might be nearer the mark. What do you think you're doing? Sorry? I said, what do you think you're doing? What does it look like? Mike's upstairs. Take your gear off, push it. OK. I told you to leave this to me. And I ignored you. Shall I make us some lunch? <sighs> David, I am not made of china. You touch that button again and there's going to be trouble. OK. Ah. I didn't touch it. Very mature. Yeah, well, you should be resting anyway, especially after earlier. What happened earlier? Oh, the baby kicked. You put that plug back in. No. You need help, you. Why? Because I want to take care of you. This isn't taking care of me. It's about you being some mental case. 
You're always watching me. I can't move without you hovering. It's getting weird. You're weird. The whole flaming thing is weird. Don't say a word. Some nibbles for Max while you decide what you want to eat. Yeah, cheers, man. Thanks, Nick. Well, this is uh, lovely. I can't keep saying I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. Tell me something I don't know. I promise I'll get my act together. You better. Am I forgiven? Oh, Mate, I gotta get home. Oh, come on, just a drink to celebrate. Go on then, just one. Hi, Gail. Hi, Sal. Do you know, I'll be glad when this baby's born and Muggins in and I have to do all this shopping. I hope you're charging them rent at number 13. Sorry? Oh, Stella and her family, now, now, now they're staying. You what? They're not staying. Oh, um, yeah. Well, the, the work stopped on the pub. What? Yeah, owing down tools. Apparently, Stella's insurance won't pay out. <laughs> Makes you wonder why, doesn't it? <laughs> do you think she, she burnt it down herself? I mean, you do hear stories of that sort of thing. Where have you got all this from? Excuse me, this isn't mere tittle-tattle. I don't go around spreading false information. I was there. I was an eyewitness when Owen attacked Carl with the crowbar. But if you don't believe me, well, that's fine. Well, what was all that about? I don't know, but strictly speaking, it's none of my business. I mean, that's Kevin's house. Mm, that's true. Although, seeing as he's not here, I should go and investigate. Yeah. You know, just to keep him informed. Well, exactly. Do you want me to come with you? Well, no, that might be pushing it a bit. But I'll fill you in after. Home early. Yeah, Nick made me. He said my arms were putting people off. Where's Kylie? Having a bath. Leave her alone, David. She's not gonna drown. I'm not even gonna go see if she wanted help. She's fine. Sit down. You're dead on your feet. You can't carry on like this, you know. Right, like what? Working yourself into the ground. Stressing over Kylie. This rate, you're going to be a wreck before the baby's even born. And so will she. I just want to make sure nothing will go wrong, that's all. Well, do you know, we can't control everything in life. Sometimes you just got to sit back and trust that things will work out. You think I'll be a good dad? You already are. No, that was different. Max was five. And this is going to be a baby. My baby. You'll be a wonderful dad. Hey, is it true, you know, what folks say when they're like, oh, he's got your nose and, you know, stuff like that? Think he'll look like me? I hope so. All right, Max, come and put your coat on. Oh, mate, don't make me chase you. I haven't got the energy. Well, that's because you're dead on your feet. No work, no play. I play. I've just played top trumps with Max. Max! You're doing too much. It's bad for you. There's plenty of people who do two jobs. And anyway, it's only for one more week. Anyway, I can manage. Right, come on. Bag. See you later. See you, love. I need some more tops. Oh, I'll do you some more now. No, new ones. Some that stretch a bit. I've got a couple you can borrow. Really? Do you mean like maternity wear? Yeah, they do all sorts these days. Most of it you wouldn't be seen dead in. Trousers yeah. with massive elasticated waistbands. Have you seen them? There's dungarees in mine. Oh, yeah. Painter and decorator look. Oh, Frankie says relaxed T-shirts made good maternity wear. I had one when I was pregnant with Sarah. What about when you were pregnant with me? Frankie says I bought. <laughs> Davey. <gasps> that is well tight. I'll uh, nip out in my lunch hour. Mm. I'll go. Well, I'll, I'll drop you off then. You'll be rushed off your feet. We know about yesterday. Why? Well, what happened yesterday? <laughs> Davey. <gasps> mm. I'll go. Well, I'll, I'll drop you off then. You'll be rushed off your feet. We know about yesterday. Why? Well, what happened yesterday? You dropped a champagne flute. Oh, not that again. 
Don't touch this iron, it's still hot. Max! I hear you've asked your grand to give your brother the day off and offer to pay his wages. If this family stands a chance, you're going to have to forget what you've done altogether. Never mind secret charity. Is that right? I know you've got regrets. We all have. If I gave my demons an inch, they'd run amok. You can go home now if you like. Afternoon, Sylvia. Sherry, please. Very dry. Coming up. Drinking alone? Is that an appropriate question for an employee to ask? No, it isn't. Just having a friendly chat. Mm, here comes my companion now. Hey? Eh? It's called wit. Oh, what it for this time? Oh, all right, well, I won't be long. I'll make sure Kirk helps you with your own work. Oh, pint, please. Our Craig's had detention. Drawing room pictures on the whiteboard. Did I hear you say that Kirk is helping him with his homework? What's wrong with that? How long have you got? Mr Andrews, it, it's all... <laughs> Kylie's having David's baby, yeah? David. Well, we hope so. No, no, no. There's no hoping. That's not how this is going to be. And no one's going to question it. So stop looking at everything I do as a sign of feeling guilty. Well, not everything. But sooner or later, David's going to notice. Then he's going to start wondering. The biggest threat to David's happiness isn't me or Kylie. It's you. This is him, so no more, please. Uh, hey, David. It's Max. Hey, Max. How are you? Something's happened to David. He's fallen over. What do you mean, he, he's fallen over? Has he had an accident? Yes. Look, uh, where are you? Are you at home? We're in the park. In the park? What, did David take you there? Yeah. Except now he's asleep and won't wake up. OK, uh, is there anyone else with you? Any grown-ups? There's Joseph and he's crying. Who's Joseph? Uh, Katie's little lad. We brought him with us. OK, well, look, uh, don't worry, cos I'm going to come and find you, OK? Uh, hello. Shh. Oh, sorry, not allowed to speak now, then. Look, uh, stay on the phone and I'll come and find you in the park. <sighs> David's had some kind of accident. Oh, no! Look, what can you see around you? 200 quid. Oh, I don't know. Have you been taking your tablets? Yeah. Sally Webster. She won't tell anyone. Oh, like you weren't going to tell anyone. I was upset. And she's a friend, a very good friend. Didn't mean you had to tell her. I'll have a word. Make sure it don't go any further. You have to kill her to do that. Nick, don't you think you should go to your doctor, have a check-up? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Eh? Yeah, there's a surgery this evening. Right, well, can you please both go and tell him that, because he won't take any notice of me? Uh, or anyone else, for that matter. <sighs> you gone off your ice crispies? No. <laughs> we let him go soft and mushy. I'm just thinking. About what? What if the baby's epileptic? Well, it won't make no difference. We'll love her whatever she is. Mm, just means she's like you. Mm. Yeah, but it can be dangerous, though, can't it? I mean, what if it's hereditary? It, they can do some amazing stuff now. Like, what if there's a test they can do where they prove whether she's got it or not? I don't need no tests. Yeah, but if we can find out anything about the baby, we, we'd be better prepared. We are prepared. But if it's possible to do it, then why not do it? At least we'd be doing something positive. I am. I, I'm going to go book an appointment with a doctor and see if we can sort this out. How much is that you bought? Squeeze it dry. Easy strokes. And use a cloth in the corners. Yes, ma'am. You know, I never thought she'd actually do it. She took cookie, your mum. No, but I can't help feeling guilty. It's not your fault. Yeah, well, she asked me for help, didn't she? Said yourself, you bail her out. Car gets a free ride. Why can't she see what he's like? Oh, they say love is blind. Yeah, deaf, dumb and blind. Hang on a minute. Stop mopping. Oh, well, you're not liking my technique? That's my mop. Excuse me. It's my mop. It's got a G on the handle. Oh, I didn't realise we had designated mops. Well, if you'd have taken a moment to look, you'd have noticed that there's a mop with a blue handle with an S stenciled on it. Oh, S for Stella. It's a simple system and it works. Right, well, I'm sorry I shall put your mop back and start again with my mop. It's all right. You can use my mop. 
Just make sure you rinse it thoroughly before you put it back. Oh. <sighs> She's a bit slow, but she'll get there. I'll go easy, Mother. It's a bit of a come down for the landlady of the Rovers. You said I was her line manager. I just didn't want you to feel your position was being undermined. Am I her boss or not? Because I regard this as an important position. You are our senior cleaning department manager. I go easy. I'll try. But two mothers-in-law on the same payroll will only work if there are clear boundaries. Hiya. Hiya. Then Everything the risk of inheriting anything is only slightly higher than for any child. You probably know more about this than me, but I'm sure you've got nothing to worry about. Sorry we hijacked you. Not a problem. Glad to be of help. Again. Well, Maria's probably going to be here in a minute. All right, we'll leave you alone. Well, um, just one question before we go. Do you know if there's any tests they can do on the baby, like tests for epilepsy? Uh, don't suppose you've got any more jobs going down here, have you, pal? Sorry, we haven't. I mean, I'll do anything. Yeah, wish I could help. <sighs> hey, I'll be back down that job centre first thing tomorrow morning and every day till I find something. Hmm. You know, I don't think I want to stay very long. I feel like every time someone spills a drink, I should be over there mopping it up. How bad was it? Oh, it's fine. I'm not afraid of bad craft. Well, none of us are. That's why we'll work our way through this. It's not the work that's difficult. Can't keep away. Well, I, I thought I'd come in and admire my shiny surfaces. Well, don't get too complacent. I mean, it was a good first day, but, uh, well, let's just say could do better. Really? Well, your mop work was a bit streaky and you did forget to change the loo roll in the gents' toilet. Oh. It's amazing, isn't it? All the years I have worked in pubs and I didn't realise how little I know. What with the art of moppery and the science of toilet bowl decalcification, thanks to Gail, I should have a PhD in cleaning by the end of the week. See you tomorrow. Eight o'clock. Sharp. Well, if you step back and hold my brekkie down. Oh, you'll be all right. Oh, as long as David likes it. What have I got for my lunch? Well, why don't you ask Nigella? But I bet it's cheese spread. Cheese spread? Again? <laughs> yeah, it's a speciality. What's this? Musical statues? Well, you're a fine one to talk. Like a zombie most mornings. Yeah, too right. I don't know whether to bring you a brew or blow you away with a sawn off shotgun. No, just a cup of tea will do, Ta. Right. Have a good day, babe. That's you. Mm. I'm only off to Bessie Street, not Vietnam. You all right? Fine. Well, go on, it's gone half past. Hmm? Do you want a top up, love? Uh, well, like strange, where's my sheep? <sighs> no, that's as high as I can go. <sighs> not as sorry as I am, mate. Oh, no good. Everything half decent in our price range is booked up for months. Left it too late. Is this the night away? Was. You don't have to go away anyway. You can just have a meal, nice meal somewhere. Oh, we can go for a meal any time. I want this to be different, special. <sighs> Fat chance on my budget. <sighs> right. Daddy, I'm falling for a monster. He's got a black heart. I love this. <laughs> What's that? Pretty, isn't it? Mmm, very fairy tale. Mm. It's got a log burning stove and a heart shaped jacuzzi called the Love Tub. How much is it? Is that what it costs per night? Well, you can't afford that. Well, I find a way. Nick. You what? Hiya. I've uh, got us a curry. Oh, brilliant. Hi, babe. Hi. What's that? What's what? That in your hand. Uh, oh, it's just something I put it off the internet for Gail. Right. Any good? Oh, uh, well, it was just uh, 20 things to do with olives, wasn't it, Kylie? Yeah, I mean, you know Gail's mad for them olives. <laughs> Are you all right, David? Yeah, fine. Would you mind telling your face? What was that piece of paper Kylie had earlier? I told you. 
20 things to do with olives. Oh, come on, you hate olives. No, I don't. Well, if it was something from the hospital, if there was something wrong, then you'd tell me, wouldn't you? I can hear you, you know. There's no door between us. Well, I will show us it then. No! What, you don't trust me? Oh, David, it was nothing from the hospital because there is nothing wrong. It was just something about olives for your mum. I think I'll have an olive now, actually. You seen Nick today? No, I. Aren't you sweet, worrying about me? Would you like an olive, Kylie? No, Tar. I love olives. For about quarter past. It's coming. Whispering again. Mm hmm. Hey, Kylie oh. was showing me her nails. Why? She put some new colour on them. Let's have a look. Come on, babe, let's get you ready. Uh, let's have a look at your nails. Right. Something is going on, and she is in on it as per usual. Are you sure it's not the baby? Is there something wrong with her? <gasps> there is absolutely nothing wrong with the baby. The baby is fine, I swear to you. Ah, but there is something. There's not. You must think I'm daft. Nail polish, really? Oh, I think you're paranoid. Right, Max, which is it, skateboard or scooter? Scooter. Right, come on then, let's split. Why don't you just tell him? What, and ruin the surprise? I'll tell him just before the taxi pulls up. I quite like having David in the dark. He can't handle it. It's funny. I'm going in, shower. Is anyone here? What time does he normally get home? Uh, five. Jamal's mum's dropping him off. Ah, oh, it's nice he's doing gymnastics. They didn't have after-school clubs when my lot were at Bessie Street. Not that it made any difference if they did, cos Davy wouldn't have gone. He's never been very clubbable. Oh, I felt like clubbing him a few times. <laughs> David, you're not in, are you? They'll be home soon. You packed his bag? Just about. Oh, cheers for looking after Max. I really appreciate it. Just promise me one thing. What? You're not doing this out of guilt? No, of course not. I'm doing it out of gratitude. After everything he's done for me. If only he knew. Well, let's thank our lucky stars that he doesn't. And long may it stay that way. <sighs> I've said this to Nick, and I'll say it to you. What's happened between you two stays in the past. It's gone. Forgotten. No need to spend the rest of your lives overcompensating. It was one night. It'll never happen again. You know that, and so do we. Can you smell flowers? <laughs> Not likely. In fact, I think we should stop talking about it altogether. What? You and Nick. <sighs> do you know the one thing I regret the most? Well, I should hope I do. Yes. I mean, I regret all of it, obviously. I just wish. I wish it happened on David's birthday. Why, well, what difference does it make? You slept with his brother. It's pretty despicable any day of the week. In fact, it's Christmas just rubs salt in the wound. No, but every time we're singing happy birthday to him or he's opening his presents. Yeah, well, let's hope that little baby turns out to be his aim. That way you're one step closer to a guilt-free future. And what if it doesn't? Better peg the washing out. You will stay quiet either way, Gail, won't you? Why are you dressed up? Cos Mummy's taking David away for the night for, like, a little holiday. Show him how much I love him. Can I come? No, not this time, babe. I'm going to be looking after you while Mummy's away. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow night. Are you going to the seaside? No, I'm going to a little country cottage. So it'll be boring for you. I'll give you a ring before you go to bed, OK? Think he was hoping for a stick of R.O.C.K. there? Well, I'm sure if we pass a G.I.F.T. shop along the way... <laughs> that's if we get out, that is. What time are you going? Well, when he gets back, well, I thought he'd be home by now. I'll give him a ring, see where he is. Don't want to leave it too late. Can't wait to see his face when I tell him. He's still not wrong. I'm going to try the salon. Maybe he's gone for a drink. No, he never does that without telling me. Not unless we've had a row, anyway. Oh. And where have you been? Kylie's been worried about you. 
And you two big mates now, are you? What? Anyway, I've got a surprise for you. That's funny. Because I've got one for you and all. Do you want to go first, or shall I? You're amazing, you know that. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Anyway, mine's this. So you've been so brilliant just lately, like, looking after me and that. I booked us a night away in a luxury cottage in Cheshire. And do you want to wear mine? Is that all you've got to say? Go on, then. I've done this for you, David. That's your mummy in the cottage tonight. And that's the cat. There is no cat, Max. In stories, there's always a cat by the fire. Mummy's taking you because she loves you. Anyway, that's my surprise. It's there if you want it. What's yours? Um, I haven't got one. Then why say you had? Because I've seen you whispering to people these past few days and I thought you was up to something. So that's what all this has been about? You thought I was sneaking about behind your back? No, I, I just felt funny about it, that's all. Not like you, David. So, are we going to walk? It's nearly quarter past six already. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Night on me, on me, you. What could be better? I told you it was worth waiting for, didn't I? <laughs> you have a fantastic time. You deserve it. You got him there, then? Eventually. <laughs> yeah, not the easiest guy in the world to fool. Yeah, he knew I were up to something. Nothing bad, though, eh? Oh, we'll have a good time, anyway. We will. And don't worry about anything this end. Got it all under control. Bye. Drive. See ya. Pick another station, please. There you go. Final. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, we're going to the Red Rep to play football. Shouldn't you be at school? Well, last room got flooded. Burst pipe, so we're going to go and get an extra bit of training. Sure, this is wise. He's a six year old boy. Yeah, and you're probably not as fit as you used to be. We're going for a kickabout. It's not the Champions League. Just hope you can keep up with me. David makes us run two laps before we play. I prefer three. Mum. Want to come with us? No, some of us have to work. Please be careful. Come on. On your marks. Get set. Go. Da, 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 da. Can we go swimming this afternoon? Swimming? I can't swim. Oh, I'll teach you. Thanks, love. I'm frightened of water. Ah. David always takes it. Yeah, well, I'm not David. I can play my football. Look at me. I'm your granny. Not Robin Van Persie. What's for dinner? Mm. Some crisps in the cupboard. David usually makes me sausage chips. And some and beef. cake. Have some cake. Okay. I've only got oh, half an hour. Missed for you, lunch. big man. You all right? Oh, I've done me groin in. More importantly, did you have a nice time? Well, a surprise trip away. What's not to like? Except the thought of everybody sneaking around behind my back. Yeah, I know you were in on it. Only because we care about you. Really? So, how was your day, Tiger? Good. Good. What kind of way? Morbid, depressed. I don't know if he's heading for another fit. Hey, you're crushing me. Oh, that's because I have the power to squeeze out your very last breath. Come <laughs> big man, past your bedtime. That's mine and all to the exercise I've had today. Yeah, I'll take him. I want David. Uh, yeah, so do I. How about a quick one in the Rovers, what'd you say? You do me a favour. You look after your mum for me while I go sort my brother out. Hmm? Now she's very precious, so you'll have to take good care of her. Go on. Great. First round's on me. So nice to me. Reminding me, this is your house. But if I don't buy the milk, there's never any in the fridge. I just went and got some dinner. Because you had no choice. You didn't do it because when you drank the last drop last night, you thought, oh, we might need some milk in the morning. I'll go and get some. 
You just don't think like that. Neither of you do. It's the same with the cleaning, the washing up. You and Kylie just assume it will all be done. Oh, will you shut up, you silly cow? You're doing my head in. All you ever do is witter on, sharing every little inane thought that pops into your tiny little head. Can't you filter some of it out? Or better still, just keep your gob shit all together. David. And yes, I do own this house, so I don't see why I should have to put up with this. I mean, you should be grateful we even put a roof over your head. I could have kicked you out on the street, you know. And in fact, we might still do that. You can take all your little hideous ornaments, all your little cheap tat with you, and get the place deep cleaned, degaled. You don't mean that. You know, last time you moved out, Mum, it was bliss. I don't even know why we let you back in again. Must be gluttons for punishment. Excuse me, this is your mother you're talking what, to. What, and you think that entitles you to some respect, does it? Don't make me laugh. You're a lousy mother. You always have been. Awful. I had a miserable childhood growing up and you're making me miserable now. I should even get you a mug made. World's worst mother. Why are you being so nasty to me? Because <sighs> I feel like it. All I did was point out that I do everything, and I do! Yeah, well, you're not the only one who's allowed to complain about what goes on under this roof. Right, if you won't move out, then I'm putting your rent up. What? Well, you pay as a pittance as it is. Why should I have to subsidise your mourning? You're being ridiculous. I'm serious. You can't. I can. Why are you doing this? disappeared at one point. I had to go and find him. And when I did, he kept asking me if I loved him and telling me how much he loves me. Look, it's just been miffed you organised something without letting him in on it. So he sulks. It's what he does. How's the cottage? All right? Gorgeous. Really nice living out. Great views. Lovely bed. All wasted on misery guts. He came back in a foul mood. Really? Well, yeah. Some this morning seemed OK. Tore a strip off me for daring to criticise him for using up all the milk. Did it? Absolutely flew off the handle. When was this? Just after you left to take Max to school. He said some really nasty things. But I just assumed the pair of you had been talking about me and how fed up you were. Well, we didn't mention you. Only to say how much of a lovely gran you are to Max. You didn't decide you wanted me to move out? No. Because it will get cramped in that house when the baby comes. We'll need you more. And he didn't discuss putting up me rent with you? No, and even if he did, I wouldn't let him. He's just winding you up. You know what he's like. Well, I know what he used to be like, but I thought he'd changed. Today, it's like he went out for milk and came back his old nasty self. I've been in that house for 20 years. I'd hate to have to move out, move into some grotty bedsit. Cos that's all I could afford. Hey, you are not moving out and we're not going to put your rent up. You leave David to me. Oh, if you two have come to wine... <sighs> if David's serious... He's not. Do you know what's up with him? Oh, he's just being moody. I'm not staying where I'm not wanted. Hey, you are wanted. David's just talking rubbish. Oh. New wine glasses? Ooh, what they like. Have a look. Oh, <gasps> they're nice. You know, we should road test them. Put some wine in them, try them out. Oh. Forget about David for ten minutes. Stick an orange juice in mine, then. Yeah, I should be on that, too. I'm gagging for the real thing. A few months from now, bring it on. Cheers! Cheers. Dennis? You all right? Where's Carla? Working. She tried calling you, but it went to answer machine then. Max is on a sleepover, so there's just the two of us. So I've done as told him the whole. No, I'm not hungry. Well, you will be by the time it's ready, and I, I thought, seeing we're just the two of us, we might have a little chat. Well, if it's about the rent, you can forget it. And I've said I don't want your dinner, so... Do you know, I don't know what's got into you. I was only trying to... What? Hell? Yes! I thought with Kylie working, you'd be grateful. Oh, did you? Trouble is, you always think you know what I want, don't you? Or what's best for me? No, I don't. I just... What is wrong with you? Oh, hi, Nick. What? Well, that's terrible. One would have thought. What kind of sick person would do this to someone else's home? Probably someone who's out on drugs. Yeah, police reckon if it was druggies, they would have taken something. You know, tele, computer, something they could sell on. Maybe they got disturbed. It was a laptop, camera, small stuff. 
You know, the thought of some scumbag in my home going through my things, it makes me skin crawl. Look how easy it was to get in. Look, I'm just going to fix the door and change the lock. I mean, what if we'd have been here? What if Simon had been here? They may come back. Yeah, well, they won't if they've got any sense. Listen, why don't you lot go around to ours? It looked like I could do with a drink or something like that, and I'll wait here for Owen. That sounds like a good idea. Sure? Yeah, of course I am. But, uh... Cheers. You know, the stupid thing is, I think I'd feel better if they had taken stuff than it would have been a straightforward burglary, which would have been bad enough, but to not take anything. Maybe it's like David said, I mean, maybe they were disturbed. Or maybe they were high to begin with and didn't know what they were doing. Hiya. Everything OK? Yeah, it's all sorted. Thanks. At least I could do. Oh, thought you two were meant to be on a date or something. They'd been burgled. No way. Yeah, we got to the flat and the door had been smashed in. But what did they take? Nothing. Just trash the place. All our things. Why do it to us, though, eh? Why us? Listen, if you don't want to go back there tonight... Well, they've had a new lock fitted. Yeah, but still. It's up to you. Max isn't here, so... Well, if you're sure, yeah. Yeah, of course, aren't we? Yeah. And listen, everyone, um, I've been a bit of a pain today. Sorry. No more than usual. You could Connor do mechanics, offside room. Someone breaks into an house and robs a telly or whatever. Fair enough. Not that I'm saying it's right or wrong, but I can understand it. But to just smash the place up and not take anything, what's that all about? Well, I don't understand anything anymore. I mean, I remember a time when you could oh, just... Oh, what, come... what? Leave your purse on the table, nip out for five minutes, leave the door unlocked, come back and it'll still be there. Yeah, well, not round here, you couldn't know, but... I don't remember things this bad, I really don't. Morning. Oh, hello, love. Did you sleep OK? Uh, no, Craig, my darling wife here was grinding her teeth all night. Yeah, only because I was thinking about what I'd like to do to them little scumbags that broke into our flat. I'm guessing it's not a slap on the wrist. Well, maybe with a baseball bat. <laughs> Why don't you sit down, I'll make you a cup of tea. So what are your plans for today? Well, I'm off to the bistro. Oh, I'm just going to go home and tidy up the mess. I'll come give you a hand if you want. Uh, no, it's all right, I'll manage, but thanks anyway. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I'm sure you two would do the same for me and Kyla. Sorry, love, I think you... Oh, yeah, what's this? Big family reunion? We fancy getting out the beast show, so we thought we'd come here. Slumming it a bit, you know. Yeah, I'm just making the numbers up. How's the flat looking? Well, I've binned everything that was smashed and I've given it a good clean. I don't know if I'm ever going to feel comfortable in there again, but... I'm not going to let whoever did this to us drive us away. I just hope the police get to him before I do. Well, I'd love to stay here all day, but better go. Got things to do. Oh, I'll walk out with you, actually. Oh, David, you're still all right to pick us up later, aren't you? Yeah, sure, yeah. Ta. See ya. See ya. That's very nice of you, helping out like that. Well, yeah, Peter said he'd pick him up, but I said, no, it's all right, I'll do it. We seem pretty worried about Leanne, you know, after the break in. And Simon, obviously. Why, well, what did he say? Nothing much. We could just tell he was concerned about her. We have got history, haven't we? Them two more than most. Well, let's hope it is just history. Go on, then. Doesn't it stop you getting drunk, you know? Good. You are right? Oh, yeah, I just cut myself before. You're a plaster? No, oh, Liz. How long have I been working for you? You've never offered me a plaster, not even a thank you. Thanks. Would you like a plaster? Any more word from the police? No, I don't suppose we're high on the list of priorities, are we? I still think it's weird they didn't take all. Probably off their faces. I've been battered a million times. I'd never leave behind a brand new laptop. If I'd ever robbed anyone's flat. <laughs> oh, come on, you didn't grow up on my estate. Well, we'll probably never know who it was now anyway. Maybe one of his disgruntled ex-girlfriends. It's enough to choose from. <laughs> Thanks, man. She's got a point, though. Well, they don't know where I live. You can find anybody on the internet these days. True. Oh, no. The police said it was kids, and I believe them. Like you said, we may never know. Uh, how many angry exes have you got? Uh, well, not as many as you. How are you? Uh, 
Well, Si, si David did pick him up, didn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's still got it. We'll pins here, aren't we? Will she show up, won't she? Yeah, well, she's here now. Oh, sorry. Hey, Lee. There you go. Si left that to ours. Oh, right. Uh, oh, I was cracking up last night. You know, when he does all the funny voices and oh, everything. Oh, no, he had me in hysterics the other night. He's a bright lad. Yeah, told me about you bribing him to do more reading. What was it that you promised him? <laughs> Power square blast. <laughs> yeah. Hey, watch it, Gail. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you look it. Look at this. You've soaked me jeans. Mm, well, floor doesn't clean itself. All right, Mum, take it easy. So, are we having cutlery today, or are we just going to put the food in a trough and let customers help themselves? I have to go and change my jeans now. The cold shower while you're at it. Oh, don't ask me. Of a rocker. Unbelievable. Do you have to book in or what? Um, yeah. The one that was so urgent, Peter was compelled to race round here with it like it couldn't wait. What you need, Leanne, is a pigeonhole. A what? A pigeonhole. I had one when I worked at the medical centre. Yeah, the resort. Then if there's something somebody wants to drop off to you, they can stick it in your pigeonhole. <laughs> you serious? Then they don't have to hang around bothering you. Stopping you working. Oh, Gail, he was here for, what, all of two minutes? Anyway, I don't have to justify myself to you. Might I remind you that I'm your boss? Might I remind you that I'm the owner's mum? Top trump. Gail, clean as a ten a penny. And it's tough out there. Might do you well to remember that. Wait, have I offended your mother? That's it. Smee, done for the day. I wish I could say the same. Still got the ordering to do. Then the hordes will be descending in a minute. I can do the ordering if you like. <laughs> I'll end up with enough olives to serve us a Greek wedding. No thanks. All right. You need to bite me head off. All right. Yes, Kylie feeling better? Uh, I think so, yeah. Her appetite certainly seems to be all right. She's asked for one of those um, little mini shepherd's pie things she did. Oh, yeah, help yourself to in the kitchen, in the big freezer. Oh, she got cravings? No, she just can't be bothered to cook. Oh, no, because then I'll be the one who ends up going when you make some excuse that you're busy. Right, fine. Fine, bye. Sorry, can you spare me for ten minutes? Simon's been going on about going to Alton Towers for his birthday with some of his mates. I've already said we can't afford it, but Peter's gone and said yes, the idiot. I'm sorry, I'll be ten minutes, sorry. Looks like I'll have to muck in after all. She said she'd be ten minutes. Yes, and we all know her ten minutes, especially when Peter snaps his fingers. Oh, come on, she's got a kid with a bloke. You can't blame her for that. Yeah, exactly. I just get that pie. Oh, oh the hand's still not back. It's gone AWOL. She's not gone AWOL. She texted me. Sorry, got waylaid. Don't give you much of a clue, does it? Oh, you mean she's still with Peter, then? That's what worries me. And mum, will you shut up and mind your own business? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Where have you been? Oh, don't ask. So I can go home now, can I? Don't bother to thank me. Mum, what happened? What took you so long? Oh, have I? What's this? Spanish Inquisition. Table five. <sighs> Deirdre came into the bookies to ask Peter if he could scan Amy's latest report card so she could email it to Liz. He didn't know how to do it, so I went over to Deirdre's and I... What a good idea. <laughs> Seriously, Gail, what is your problem, eh? Just because the stereotype of a mother-in-law is an interfering old bite doesn't mean you have to live up to it. Well, well, there's no need for that. Yeah, and there's no need for her sniping and all. She's been doing it all week. We're worried about where you were, that's all. Oh, well, maybe it'd just be easier if you had me tagged. 